Thank you for attending this afternoon's online hearing of the Committee on Trade, Commerce, and Entrepreneurship, which is joint, jointly held with the Ways and Means and Finance Committees. Okay, so at the moment, uh, present uh, with me, together with me, are Senators uh, Amy Marcos, Tia Cayetano, Yun lang muna, Jingle, sa ngayon. Si Senator Wynn. Senator Wynn. Senator here, Sherwin. Senator Wynn will, uh, of course, join us. Senator Wynn Gachalian, because he is the author, together with Senator Binay, of the bill which we will be, or the measure we will be discussing. <laughs> in fact, the protecting consumers and merchants engaged in internet transactions. Creating for this purpose the eco and appropriating funds therefore, which is Senate Bill Number One Five Ninety One. So, thank you, Senators Marcos and Cayetano, for and of course, and later on Gachalian for joining me in our hearing today. So there is a quorum present, and may I now call on our Committee Secretary, Ms. Jingle Concon Alam, to. Acknowledge the resource persons who are present also online. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon to our senators. Uh, allow me to acknowledge our resource persons for today's public hearing on Senate Bill 1591. Uh, to be led by the from the Department of Trade and Industry, we have Secretary Ramon Lopez, Under Secretary Ruth Castello, Assistant Secretary Mary Jean Pacheco, Division Chief Missy Sherry Lynn, and Director Maria Lourdes Yaptin Chai. From the Intellectual Property Office, we have Deputy Director Nelson Laluces. From the Philippine Competition Commission, we have Attorney Faye Condes de Zagon. From the Department of Information and Communications Technology, we have Attorney Christopher Laidan and Mr. Marlon Fabricante. From the National Privacy Commission, we have Attorney Vida Zora Bocar and Attorney Maria Frances Ira C. From the Optical Media Board, we have Attorney Anselmo Adriano. From the Movie and Television Review and Classification Board, we have Attorney Jonathan Presquito. From the Cooperative Development Authority, we have Dr. Edmund Chris Acosido and Attorney Mary Grace Mangrubang. From the Banco Central ng Pilipinas, we have Mr. Raymond Estioco. Attorney Charina B. De Vera Yap, Attorney Bridget Rose Messina Romero, Attorney Phoebe Samantha S. Alanigue. From the Bureau of Internal Revenue, we have Assistant Commissioner Larry Barcelo, Assistant Commissioner Elenita Kimosing, and Assistant Commissioner Maria Luisa Belen. From the private group, we have from the Lazada Philippines, Mr. Raymond Alimurung and Attorney Cyril Alfred Castro. From Chapi, we have Attorney Aimee Han Segovia and Christopher Ted Chin Chong. From the Philippine retailers, we have Attorney Paul Santos. And from the asset, we also have Attorney Jose Jesus Dicini. Also, we have Mr. William Yu from the ICT 4D. Um, now, sir, that's all. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, sir, uh, committee secretary. Uh, we also welcome Senator Gachalian. He's, he's now yes, on yes. the so, so, Senator Gachalian will give us an opening statement, but but let me just uh, explain our so-called ground rules for this hearings, uh, for this afternoon's hearing. Uh, we 
we intend to finish by 3 p.m. Uh, we can extend a, li a, a little longer, but that's our target time to end our hearing. And then there will be a flow of uh, resource persons I will be recognizing. We'll start with the government sector, especially with Secretary Lopez, who has to leave them us to attend an IATF meeting immediately. Then after the government sector, we go to the private sector. So marami-rami po itong nasa lista ako. I think 32 entities are represented this afternoon. Try your best to keep your messages short. At any rate, uh, before the meeting, Senator Marcos mentioned that she intends to file a related bill. So that means uh, that will happen next week. So that means that we will definitely have another hearing on this topic, on the subject matter. But, but this time, we also now uh, put in the agenda the bill to be filed by Senator Aimee Marcos. So may second, in short, meron pa pong second round or second chance to also uh, share with the committee your inputs about the subject matter of the bill or bills. So, so, ganit, so for the senators, since I do not have uh, a, a, a view of all the screens, for the senators, you can butt in any time. Magsalita na lang po kayo. Uh, for our resource persons, please raise your hand and then the committee secretary will call my attention that somebody is raising his or her hand. Okay? So, our topic for today uh, is this uh, act protecting consumers and merchants engaged in internet transactions. Uh, the author, the main author is here, and the co-author is uh, Senator Binay. Uh, this is very important because of the increased use of uh, not only social media, but uh, of the internet uh, as a whole. No? So it is, it's being used for commerce, for trading, uh, and other activities. So I think the projection uh, I, I've read the the explanatory note of Senator Wingachalian. Filipinos spend a lot of time online, but the uh, I think the percentage of the time for commercial activity is not that uh, big compared to the other ASEAN countries. So, so well, maging mas maging entrepreneurial siguro tayo. Gamitin natin yung online time natin to trade, uh, earn. Uh, earn more for our families, ganun siguro. So I hope this, uh, I think this is one of the objectives of, of this bill. So if our author is ready for his opening statement, I am ready to recognize him. Senator Wynn? Yes, yes Mr. Chair, I were, I'm ready to, uh, Sen to uh, give my opening statement. Senator Wynn Gachalian is uh, hereby recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, and uh, let me greet our fellow Senator, Senator I me, Senator uh, Pia, uh, of course, uh, our chairman, Chairman uh, S.P. Coco Pimentel, and the rest of the resource persons. But Mr. Chair, uh, we are, uh, after six months of, uh, in some form of community quarantine, uh, we have underwent uh, the most restrictive, which is the enhanced community quarantine, and then uh, it was retracted to uh, GCQ, a general community quarantine, but this is really uh, a, uh, a some form of restriction in movement to curb the spread of the virus. And because of that restriction in movement, the offshoot was it gave rise to a lot of entrepreneurs, especially online entrepreneurs, uh, Mr. Chair. And the online opportunity, uh, entrepreneurs uh, took advantage of um, being at home, learning new skills and learning uh, new um, business opportunities. And that's why in the last six months, we've seen a lot of micro, small entrepreneurs selling their services, selling their goods. And this is good, Mr. Chair, because uh, this is a way of empowering our constituents uh, and making sure that they have uh, self-advocacy when it comes to financial freedom. But Mr. Chair, um, because of that uh, explosion in um, uh, online trading and online, and, and online entrepreneurs, it also gave rise to a lot of uh, unscrupulous and abusive um, 
uh, abusive uh, traders uh, exploiting this new venue of trading. And no less than our president during his sauna uh, flagged uh, everyone that uh, he wants to curb uh, abuses by online uh, traders or unscrupulous individuals taking advantage of this uh, new avenue of trading. So, Mr. Chair, I filed uh, SB 1591, and the objectives of this bill is, number one, to promote the growth of electronic commerce and digital economy in the country by improving digital access, business innovation, and confidence among share stakeholders. Number two, ensure fair business and advertising practices, secure online transaction, maintain data privacy rights, affirm product safety, and enable access to dispute resolution mechanisms. And number three, the third objective is to establish an e-commerce bureau under the DTI. And number one, uh, the responsibility of the bureau is number one, uh, it, will, uh, it will be carrying out the provisions of this bill. Number two, will ensure the implementation of Electronic Commerce Act of, 20, of 2000. And number three, will be the focal point in monitoring and implementation of the Philippine e-commerce roadmap. So, magkakaroon mo tayo ng roadmap, Mr. Chair. And lastly, Mr. Chair, this bill covers the sale and exchange of digital products in uh, the following areas. Number one, internet retail of consumer goods. Uh, number two, online travel services. Number three, digital media providers. Number four, ride hailing services. And number five, financial services offered through digital online platforms. So, Mr. Chair, the bill not only aims to protect online sellers and buyers, but it also aims to develop the online digital commerce as a viable and as a trustworthy medium, Mr. Chair. So in a nutshell, that is our proposal. And thank you again. Thank you very much again for taking up the bill. And this is timely because we will see in the next few years, because of this pandemic, uh, it will give rise to more and more online entrepreneurs. And we have to make sure that this rise in new entrepreneurs will create a more conducive, trustworthy trading environment. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay, trustworthy trading environment. Okay, very good, very good concept. So, uh, before I recognize the secretary, if he's already online, uh, from the senators, anybody? Uh, uh, Senator, Mar uh, Senator Marcos, yes, please. Yes, thank you very much. Mas malakas ang loob ni Sherwin kesa sa akin. I had a bill uh, since last year, uh, also dealing with the same, but I had so many questions that I felt it was half-baked. However, upon advisement of the chairman, I will file um, so that we have some comparisons as well and have a healthy discussion. Um, firstly, may I observe that uh, clearly Senator Gatellian's bill uh, derives greatly from the provisions of two European Union regulations, um, of which we are very familiar, the EU Sale of Goods Directive and the EU Digital Content Directive. Inasmuch as uh, the sources uh, that are well recognized derive from two as opposed to a single one, um, I would uh, like to posit to the chairman uh, the policy uh, determination of whether we shall include uh, all transactions in the internet or shall we just pick a few tangible goods, as it were? Um, I am most concerned with my area of uh, practice, which is the digital media providers, which seems to uh, think, uh, which seems to propose that uh, finished products in advertising, gaming, music, etc., can be sold as tangible goods, which I believe is also correct. However, uh, like the European um, um, jurisdiction, perhaps we can also think of separating it in as much as digital content, digital services have a whole gamut of uh, uh, legislation involving IPOs, involving uh, uh, digital content that is totally separate as they did in Europe. For example, uh, I would like to bring to light the uh, gig economy uh, Senate Bill 1469 of Senator Angara, which talks about contracts of service 
over uh, the internet, but which are not really digital me media products as yet. So perhaps we need to make this distinction. If you make a contract of service, of scholarship, artistic, or other commission, is that included in the digital media providers or should be more uh, precisely separated like the Europeans did? Siguro isang tanong yun. Uh, baka ibang heading and some friends of mine who are involved in payment platforms have also brought about questions regarding financial services because they are not as it were tangible goods instead they are mechanisms for payment so perhaps they should also be separate so this is with the this is to do with coverage box mr chair the second point is uh, uh, may i urge that we study very carefully um, Professor Dicini is here and the rest of the experts. Um, in April of 2017, the SEC determined that a license was necessary for multinationals targeting the Philippine market. Yung definition nila, uh, Mr. Chair, ng doing business in the Philippines. Ngayon, anong gagawin natin sa mga foreign entities that opt to register? Perhaps they'll have a branch or perhaps they won't. On the other hand, what will happen to the tax enforcement? We already know that zero comes to the Philippines for Google, for example, Lazada. They're all registered in Singapore where, uh, um, where the rates are so low. Uh, is this what we would like to declare uh, with these foreigners uh, working here uh, very often behaving quite uncompetitively sa ating maliliit na entrepreneurs. Uh, but on the other hand, what is the reality of reaching out and being able to impose taxes on them? Baka naman maging katatawanan yung bill natin kung hindi naman totoo, abay uh, uh, isipin na lang natin, i-delay muna natin until we can figure the thing out. Uh, so, if there are issues with digital services and media, secondly, I have concerns about uh, foreign, foreign, uh, foreigners doing business here. Yung ikatlo, Mr. Chair, yung problema po natin sa MSMEs. Uh, Secretary Lopez is here and I'm grateful for his presence. To my mind, sana yung MSMEs ng mga ng natin dito sa Pilipinas, bigyan natin ng palugid ng tatlong taon man lang. Kasi I think the one year, um, the one year uh, term, uh, given the very onerous, uh, very onerous penalties and fines, medyo mabigat. Sa totoo lang, for class 2020 graduates, the only option for work is online. And if we tax it pa, kawawa naman sila, wala nang trabaho, hindi pa makabenta online. Mabigat-bigat yun. Yung iba nga, linulusot na lang sa barter and exchange of services. Pero importante talaga, we encourage this. Let's not depress it with imposing it uh, with so many taxes at the onset. Natatakot po ako kay Congressman Salceda, yung Netflix tax, eh, papalo rin yan para sa ating mga local movie and other producers. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Senator Marcos. Okay, are we ready to proceed with our Mr. Chair, list? I just have a short statement. Yes, the other PM. Yes, go ahead. Yeah. Um, Mr. Chair, this is actually a joint hearing with my committee, the Committee on Ways and Means. Uh, there are some tax provisions here. And uh, I agree with Senator Marcos. Let's study it very well. I also, uh, I think all of us have observed uh, if not uh, tayo tayo and our spouses, wala akong spouse, but uh, Senator Coco has a spouse who sent me something, a product of, uh, and I have also sent you something, product of mga young entrepreneurs, you know, mga uh, uh, young kids, the age of our kids who are now engaged in this. And um, by the strict definition of the bill that we are tackling, uh, all of them will be required to register. And um, uh, when they register as a single proprietorship, that that also would require that uh, the mayor's permits and all the accompanying um, uh, checklist of the mayors will be completed. But uh, from my understanding, uh, the mayors are not yet uh, in a position to be to be um, granting online uh, permits, no, because they are still um, they are, number one they are grappling with uh, COVID, uh, and to be able to make that shift will take some time. They technically, if it's a food business, and I think that's the most shared product nowadays, diba? from brownies to cupcakes, 
lahat na ng version niyan, na invento na ng mga Pilipino, at lahat yun, nakain na rin natin. <laughs> um, uh, I, if they will all be registered, um, they, if they do not f- comply, they will all be in violation of this. So that's something that we really need to take into consideration of as we tackle it. And then two points lang. Um, well, the other one was, uh, the first one was a taxation measure. The second is, um, although it is not referred to my other committee, the Committee on Sustainable Goals, Innovation and Futures Thinking, um, I do intend to listen intently because um, it really falls within the ambit of that committee's work as well. No, um, Innovations and Futures Thinking, I'm very excited about this. This is opportunities to innovate. Um, but I also want to... Um, call uh, attention to the resource person to please take note of goal number eight, which is decent work and economic growth. Um, yun nga iniisip natin, ano? how do we create that environment of growth um, given given consensus and uh, given what we we want to do, we want to regulate. So in my earlier discussions with uh, DTI, sabi ko, um, I'm all for regulation naman, but how do we uh, allow it to flourish and grow before we kill it? No? Something like that. Um, and then for 12, um, uh, responsible consumption and production. Uh, one thing I've noticed is dumami din ang gamit natin ng plastic, pagandahan din ng packaging. It's one thing to ensure that the product arrives safely na mukha pa rin siyang edible. It's another thing that uh, it is double, triple layered in, uh, in um, uh, what do you call this, non non-renewable or non-reusable packaging materials, and number one, there's plastic. So it's really going to cost. I, I support online, the growth of online transactions, but we really have to look into uh, responsible consumption and production. That's it, lang, Mr. Chair. I'd like to the resource person to take note of these concerns of mine, so if they can include it in their presentations or make a separate um, uh, position paper on it, on how they seek to address these things, it would be very much welcome on my part. Thank you very much. Thank you, Senator Caetano. Well, for your information, ma'am, for as long as uh, I am chair of the Trade Committee, our motto is, we will not we will not tax businesses to death, we will not over-regulate businesses to death. Ayun po yun. <laughs> yun ang gawin natin. <laughs> okay, so Secretary Lopez wants to go ahead, sir, kasi we will attend the an IETF meeting, Secretary? Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Chairman. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Chair, Chairman uh, SP Coco Pimentel, sa ating pong author, Senator uh, Sherwin Gatsalian, uh, co-chair, uh, Senator Pia Cayetano, Senator Marcos. All your inputs I've taken note po at uh, very valuable, uh, very important uh, also to our fellow workers in government and uh, partners in private sector. Uh, during the State of the Nation address po of the President, we were gratified to hear about his directive to work with Congress on the enactment of the Internet Transaction Act to promote the growth of e-commerce. Uh, at the same time, protect the welfare of you online consumers. We heard the President mutter, this is very good, which shows his appreciation for this important piece of legislation. In terms of parliamentary status, the bill is proceeding in both houses of Congress. We thank the chairs of Senate Committee on Trade, Commerce, and Entrepreneurship, uh, the Ways and Means, and Finance for the joint committee hearing today. In the House of Representatives, a committee report was prepared by the Committee on Trade and Industry uh, under Kong Chair uh, Wes Gatchalan in uh, substitution of the House bills 6122 and 6958. Uh, so they're expected to be filed for floor deliberation soon. To say that the proposed bill of the Internet Transaction Act is relevant and timely is really an understatement. We thank the authors of the bill, uh, Senator Win Gatchalian and Senator B. Knight, for this measure. Uh, pati na rin po yung uh, magiging proposed uh, bills po in the future nila Senator uh, Amy Marcos. Uh, and uh, yung mga strong inputs po from Senator Cayetano and of course our Chair, Papi Mintel. Uh, prior to the COVID-19, the DTI has already mobilized the e-commerce ecosystem and engaged the marketplace platforms, logistics providers, payment gateways, and government agencies in updating the Philippine e-commerce roadmap to develop strategies to promote e-commerce growth in the country, increase the number of online merchants and online sellers, 
and ensure consumer protection. Our prime directive was to build trust and our simple strategic framework delve on speed, security, and structure resulting in sales. While undergoing the roadmap review, COVID-19 struck the world. Six months into the pandemic, we see a new normal. Now our goal, building trust between online merchants and online consumers has created an even profound significance uh, since e-commerce adoption has indeed accelerated over the past six months. Uh, I'll cite some DTI facts as our barometers. In terms of business names registered with the DTI, uh, a requirement for sole proprietors, we saw substantial increase. Prior to the declaration of the state of national emergency, there were only about 1,753 online businesses registered uh, their business name. That's from January 1 to March 15. However, from the start of the community quarantine period, March 16 to August 31 uh, of this year, a total of 73,276 got registered. So we now have a total registered of 25,029. Um, and uh, this is over 4,000% uh, percent increase. Uh, consumer complaints, while you see a huge jump in business names registered, our regulatory arm, the Consumer Protection Group, has likewise seen an equally significant rise in the number of consumer complaints. Um, this is all in pertaining to online transactions. From a total of 2,457 complaints in 2019, uh, these online transactions jumped to 12,630 as of 31 August. The, the quadruple increase of, uh, of this is uh, attributed to the surge of online transactions due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The highest number of complaints, 8,000, were during the months of April and May, when the strictest level of community quarantine was in effect in major areas of the country. Uh, due to the limited movement of people, consumers heavily relied on online shopping for their basic and essential needs. On this uh, internet transaction app, uh, this brings to light the core mandate of the DTI, Trabajo, Negocio, and Consumer. The proposed app brings to fore the government's twin role of enabling businesses and protecting consumers. With our efforts to promote online commerce, the DTI seeks to encourage the growth of e-commerce sector as a source of jobs, promote digitalization of uh, micro SMEs to expand their customer base, optimize their operations, and reduce costs. We want a more robust e-commerce, tulad ng sinabi ninyo, Mr. Chairman, na napaka-importante, matulungan itong mga bagong uh, sibol ng mga internet uh, online business people. For these reasons, we see the value of the proposed Internet Transaction Act, now the subject of the Senate's deliberation. The bill establishes a regulatory framework for Internet transaction that is animated by the following key principles. The bill is about promoting and supporting Filipino platforms and business. So it embodies the principle of the, that offshore non-resident platforms shall be treated under the law equally as uh, domestic platforms. Equal treatment gives domestic platforms opportunities to grow and be competitive. May tax incentives dimpo, as, as um, uh, mentioned and elucidated by Senator Marcos, to encourage domestic entrepreneurs, especially during this time of pandemic, to operate above ground. A unified e-commerce regulatory framework carves a path for DTI to address regulatory gaps in the field of e-commerce uh, when it is unclear whether existing regulatory agencies could exercise jurisdiction over emerging businesses. Uh, number two, the bill is also about promoting the best interests of Filipino consumers. The bill provides effective remedies for Filipino consumers who are injured even if sellers are located abroad, ensuring the government's regulatory authority. DTI being empowered with regulatory powers will allow uh, for proactive protection of Filipino consumers. Uh, DTI having the authority to take down websites or issue and disease orders allows and will enable DTI prompt and effective means to curtail further harm to consumers caused by the websites selling illegal or dangerous products or services. The e-commerce Philippine Trust Mark provides greater public assurance of safety and security in internet transactions. Uh, finally, Mr. Chairman, the bill balances the interests of entrepreneurs consumers and government. 
the biggest source, a forum for e-commerce stakeholders to raise issues and concerns surrounding e-commerce, allowing regulation to occur under an environment of stakeholders consultation. And also the regulatory approach and framework, informed as it is by experience after years of, of observing actual developments on the ground in the emergence of e-commerce can be promoted as a regional model moving forward. So, Mr. Chairman, uh, to the authors and honorable senators, the TTI is fully supportive of the bill, and we sincerely hope for the bill's immediate enactment. Uh, however, we wish to submit the uh, joint committee some of our proposed revisions for consideration of the Senate, and this would be just in the areas of uh, the scope and coverage, uh, partly clarifying also the uh, the message of Senator Marcos, the extraterritorial application, the powers of e-commerce bureau, composition of the bureau, jurisdiction of TTI, and on transitory provisions. In conclusion, uh, in conclusion, Paul, we in DTI have adopted a tagline, Basta e-commerce madali, to encourage our citizens, whether online merchants or online consumers, to adopt e-commerce. But madali also stands for market access, digitalization, logistics integration, which serves as our priorities. The DTI believes that the proposed Internet Transaction Act is a landmark piece of legislation, especially at this time when the world is faced with global pandemic and online commerce. Contactless transactions have become the new normal. We will need a law that will allow government agencies to maximize the benefits brought about by a digital economy and effective enough for our Kababayans to put their trust in online e-commerce and feel safe. Maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat at mabuhay po tayo. Salamat po, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Thank you. Secretary. But may question lang ako, Secretary, in, in the rise in consumer complaints. Kasi in one of your uh, briefings to the committee, sabi mo noon parang ang satisfaction rating ninyo for resolving the complaints, mm -hmm. 99 plus percent yata. Ah. Eh. Well, kumusta ngayon? Apektuhan ba kayo? Uh, marami po talagang pumasok. Uh, Doon po sa mga pumasok na yon, uh, I think over 12,000. 12, We have preferred more, over 90%. Kasi ho, ang nangyayari ngayon, hindi lahat ay under DTI. Some would be on the different agencies. So we are fast also in acting on it. The endorsement, let's say, to FDA, pagka mga food and drug related yung uh, products or, or ineffectiveness, uh, or also to NTC, uh, if it's telco related and, and, and many more. So yung mga produkto po, depende ho sa, it depends on the products that are under complaint. But uh, we can uh, confidently say that we are acting fast on all those complaints, Mr. Chairman. So basta, sa, basta yung satisfaction rating, uh, conscious yes, case, <laughs> you, you, were, you were once upon a time proud, very proud of the <laughs> satisfaction rating. So I hope you maintain that rating. <laughs> Yes, Mr. Okay. Chairman. Uh, uh, my fellow senators, do you have questions for the secretary? Because anytime he can uh, leave leave this meeting. I... Senator Marcos, Senator Caetano, Senator Win. Pasok lang po. Di... Wala, wala. Laging laging kakampi natin si secretary mo ne. Eh. I will stay here po until uh, ano hanggang. Sige. Yeah, sige. Uh -huh. Three secretary. Okay, so. Mr. Chair. Hi, Senator Wynn, yes, go ahead, yes, sir. I have a quick question, Kay Secretary, and uh, I saw this last night on TV. Secretary, I think there's a move now to uh, uh, try to encourage you know, um, online entrepreneurs to register. And uh, I heard over the TV that uh, the registration process is quite uh, manual or it, it needs physical presence. Uh, parang it defeats the purpose of the whole concept of online entrepreneurs when we will require them to visit DTI or visit uh, whatever agency because the whole point of them going online is because yeah, they see opportunities and that's their um, mind frame no? to do uh, full digitalization. So I just want to get your... Uh, reaction whether that report is indeed happening right now and um, I, I really want to uh, 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 tell the department that uh, to pursue a pure online 
uh, registration or pure online relationship building with these online entrepreneurs? Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, thank you, uh, Senator Gachalian. Uh, that's really a, a, a very uh, good and uh, actually an act an, uh, a real real world uh, challenge until now. But uh, we have actually a program, part of Ease of Doing Business. It really, we started to really work on putting everything online. I said you know, to the uh, to the ARTA, the Director General, the, we, are, we are in the uh, ARTA Advisory Council that really the ultimate Ease of Doing Business is everything is done here in the phone. Pati yung online. For the DTI part, the business name registration takes only eight minutes. Mr. Chairman, I'm happy to say that the DTI part na convert na natin online uh, up to the e-payment platform. So we are sharing that kind of uh, principle. The task now in the in uh, and this is being led now by Arta before it used used to be led by DTI, uh, but we're now part of the team that is really converting many of the processes online. As a starting a business. Uh, from the registration, sa pag DTI sole proprietorship, online na po dito, eight minutes. Sa SEC, I know that they they are partly manual and online. Uh, ibig sabihin po nun, they, they have a one-stop shop at the SEC office. Uh, and and however, yun nga lang, may physical uh, appearance pa doon. But, but that is really a process that will eventually lead to online na rin sila. What they're doing right now, Mr. Chairman, uh, Senator Wynn, is that uh, they're also streamlining that process. And pag na-streamline kasi, kasunod na yung automation. They, we cannot aut just automate the current inefficiency of the uh, procedure. So streamline and then automate. Uh, so we, uh, our task in the ARTA, in fact, in the last meeting uh, about two weeks ago, we said that to among all the ease of doing business indicator, you starting a business, ang i-project na i-prioritize. Uh, and we, we've done something on that. Uh, to, to cut my answer, basically, it's a work in progress. And, uh, I'm confident to say maybe just give us maybe within the next 12 months, hopefully online na yan, end to end. Kasi ngayon online some parts. Eh. The, in the Valenzuela, Valenzuela uh, you know, uh, yes, you, of course you know, Mr. Senator, in Valenzuela, <laughs> you mayors permit, online na rin. So make a segment na online eh. Uh, SEC, hindi pa total, but they're moving towards that. And then mayor's permit in some LGUs online, in some one-stop shop. Now. And then BIR is heading towards online registration as well. So it's a matter of connecting na lang po. So hopefully within maybe six months, 12 months, we will be able to integrate. That will, that will be really our ultimate project, uh, Mr. Chairman. Secretary, just to, ano lang, no, the, uh, I just want to suggest to the department Maybe we can start with the with a pure online registration of micro entrepreneurs with DTI. I think DTI can pave the way already to pure online. Uh, alam po yung sinasabi niyo, no? some departments are saying, okay, online na kami. Pero pag tinig na may requirements, the requ you can download the the files, the, the application online, but the requirements, there's physical, there's physical presence for it. So, my suggestion lang, uh, just as a, uh, just to encourage our online entrepreneurs is to do online registration, pure online registration with at least DTI spearheading that. Tingin ko kaya, Secretary, because, you know, I, I tried the, uh, I tried the Grab. In Grab, who kasi meron siyang e-wallet. And yung PayMaya, my e-wallet, tsaka yung GCash. Okay. And uh, you can do everything via phone. You just have to take the picture of your driver's license, ibibigay mo sa kanila, and they will have a validation process online. No, of course, pag, uh, pag, uh, I think kung yung credit mo, they will give you, uh, they will uh, they will approve your credit, uh, your your uh, online wallet. But the point of the matter is, it can be done, you know? and I think we can already uh, practice that with DTI. Just a suggestion, Secretary. Uh, yes, consider done, uh, Mr. Senator. Actually, DTI, online, done na tayo. Yung pong BIR, actually, dahil dun sa registration to sa online, uh, if I remember right, the BIR requirement, DTI uh, registration lang and BIR. So if ma-online din si, si BIR, uh, is keeping muna the mayor's permit, 
at least yung online business can be online registered na. Uh, now, and in some LGUs, as mentioned, meron na nakakagawa online, we'll try to make it online. Yung SEC po, I think, uh, malapit na rin mga online yung kasi meron na kaming design thinking na ginawa dyan na ano, uploading of all the document requirements, no physical presence. Ina-upload na yung mga requirements nila. And no more, I think they're, they're doing something on the notarization. Meron na kasi yatang patas ngayon dyan on e-notarization or, or rules. So, but that, uh, that will be our uh, immediate uh, project. Thank you, Senator Wins, uh, Secretary. Secretary, para lang maintindihan ko, may, may binanggit ka na March 16 to August 31, 2020, yung increase, 75,000 na. Ano yun? Ano yun? Yun po yung, uh, yun po yung mga nag-register online sa DTI. So, so yun yung online. Thing, registration, online po. In pure, pure online. Online, uh, as to pati e-payment, kasama na ho doon. So, anong tawag dito sa kanila? 75,000 people or entities uh, registered? Registered uh, uh, business name registration. Business yeah. name. And, uh, okay. And you did it purely online? Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Chairman. Oh, yun, pa, yun, yun pala. Kaya na pala eh. Kaya ho sa... Kasi even even in the business name registration, meron silang proof of identity na sinabmit, right? So, online din ginawa yun. Tama po. Ah, okay, so okay, so nagawa na nga talaga. Okay, so uh, next on my list. Mr. Would Chair, Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair. Secretary. Sino ito? I me, I me. Is it I me? Yes. Oo, yeah. May tatanong lang kay Secretary, pa uh, konting uh, konting hirit lang. Ah, uh, doon sa hearing namin ni uh, Senator Pia ng SDG, naalala ko yung DICT uh, Yung DICT representative, I think may DICT rin dito, Luigi De Vera, sabi niya, DICT is ramping up free Wi-Fi kasi may hangganan nga yung kay uh, Secretary Mon. Eh, tulad ng SEC, alimbawa, online nga, pero barabara naman, di ka makapasok kailan man. Ganon din yung SSS, online nga fully, pero hindi ka naman makapasok whatsoever. Ngayon, sabi ng DICT, doon sa committee hearing ni Senpia, Nagra-ramp up daw ng Wi-Fi program and will reallocate funds to address the internet. Uh, gusto ko lang sana kung pupunta na rin si Secretary Mon doon sa ating uh, IATF, can he please ask what is the status today of the free Wi-Fi program and were they able to successfully reallocate or realign the funds that he had mentioned? Yun lang. Okay po. Okay. Uh, Pero may DICT yata dito. Uh, ito, ito. I, 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 will, I will jump the, the list na. I will go to the Department of Information and Communications Technology. And dito yata si Attorney Christopher Laidan and Mr. Marlon Fab Fabricante. So, gentlemen, if you can answer the question of Senator Marcos and then also comment on the pending measure. Are you ready, sir? The ICT? Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman. Sige, sino, sino to si attorney? Uh, yes, good afternoon, sir. Uh, this is attorney Christopher Leiden. Okay, yes, uh, with me here then po is Director uh, Caloy Reyes and OIC uh, Marlon Fabriganta. Um, with regard po dun sa free Wi-Fi project, um, ongoing po naman siya ngayon. Uh, hindi lang ako sigurado po dun sa data kung ano na yung status niya because it's under Digital Philippines po. So, um, maybe we can submit it later when we get more information from that office. And then, on the other matter po, um, wala naman Kung... Na, yan yung attention na nag-really allocate ng funds para i-ratchet up yung ating internet. Uh, baka may balita kayo doon? Or else, uh, tanong ko lang sana kay uh, Secretary Hanasan. Hi. Uh, yes, ma'am. Yes, Senator. Um, we will get back to you po on that since hindi po siya under sa office po na kinabibilangan ko sa ngayon. So, we'll get more information on that po. Sige, let us, can you comment on the bill, on the measure? Uh, yes, Mr. Uh, Chairman. Mr. Chairman, si Carlos Reyes Pro from the Cybersecurity Bureau. I have with me the position paper for the uh, uh, 
uh, suppose uh, Senate Bill Number 1591. Let me read, Mr. Chairman, uh, Madam Chairs, and uh, Honorable Senators. A reference is made to your call for the DICT's position on the proposed Internet Transaction Act introduced by Honorable Senator Sherwin Catalian. The bill aims to strengthen the trust between online sellers and consumers by laying down the fundamental rules and principles that regulate online transaction. It also intends to create the e-commerce bureau upon the depart under the Department of Trade and Industry that shall implement, monitor, and ensure the strict compliance of stakeholders to the provisions of this legislative measure. As part of the DICT's powers and functions to ensure the, and protect the rights and welfare of consumers and businesses, and to support the promotion of trade and investment opportunities in the ICT and ICT-enabled services, we expressly manifest our full support on the passage of this legislative measure. Further, we would like to provide inputs and recommendations on the following provisions. Section 2, Declaration of Policy. May we request to, to uh, include uh, the statement and quality after product safety. Uh, to read, we suggest for the second sentence to read as towards this end, the state shall ensure fair business and advertising practices, secure online transactions through appropriate disclosure, maintain data privacy rights, affirm the paramount importance of product safety and quality, and enable all consumers and businesses to have meaningful access to effective mechanisms for dispute resolutions. The Honorable Committee may find worth considering the inclusion of the Department of Information and Communications Technology as one of the implementing agencies in Section 21 based on the following rationale. The DICT is the regulatory authority over domestic, private, express, and or messengerial delivery service commonly known as courier service. There are likewise delivery service using online platform as it is in fact the current trust. The delivery service which the DICT regulates is an important part of every e-commerce transaction. While transactions for purchase of goods may be perfected online, such perfected transactions, either contracts may not be consummated without delivery of the purchased good, usually done by engaging the services of the PEMEDES operators. The DICT, having its expertise in cybersecurity, could innovate parameter or set trademarks standards to determine the qualification of a merchant for the trust mark. Digital platforms are DICT's concern, particularly on the trust and confidence aspect. Uh, should this be considered, Mr. Chair, the inclusion of this paragraph under Section 1021 shall read as the Department of Information and Communications Technology with respect to delivery services. In support, in, in support of the proposed bill, the DICT recommends the establishment of the National Broadband Network of the government that will help the small ISPs in local areas to support the other programs and projects, such as the free Wi-Fi for all programs, digital education, among others. As of this writing, sir, the DICT has connected 4,056 free Wi-Fi hotspots around the country. We hope that with our submission, we have been of service to the committee and to the Filipino people. Thank you, sir, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, tandali. Yung Jose, Jose Carlos lang sir, nakikita ko dito. What's, anong, anong name niya sir ulit? Yes sir, uh, director, director of po ako ng Cyber Security Bureau, Jose Carlos Reyes po. Ah, Dr. Director Reyes. Okay, director. Thank you very much. Uh, you, who was the one who spoke before you? Si Attorney Laidan. Attorney Laidan? Y yes, yung, sir. Ano yung, ano yung Digital Philippines? Hindi ako aware. What's, what's that? What's that? Uh, uh, third party service provider ano uh yes uh no sir sir it's uh, an office po under the ICT it's ah, the okay. office po of assistant secretary Manny Kaindik okay so that's parang may pangalan yung office niya and then that is the free wifi project is under that office okay i get it okay. tama tama okay yes sir okay thank you DICT for the input and let me now go to the philippine competition commission and ba si Attorney Faye Condes de Sagon, ma'am? Attorney Faye is here. Jing, Committee Secretary, Jing Yel? Dito po siya, sir. Okay. Uh, apologies, Mr. Chair, I'm having a little trouble with my uh, connection. Uh, good afternoon, Chair, uh, Senators. 
Um, thank you for inviting the Protein Competition Commission to this uh, hearing. Um, we'd like to report that uh, when this was actually being deliberated upon uh, in the House of Representatives, that we had, we were also uh, um, invited as a resource person. So uh, most of the provisions that are found in the House bill are exactly the same as uh, those in the Senate bill. And we have a number of things that we'd like to raise. Uh, primarily, the PCC is really quite supportive of this, um, of the objectives of this bill or these bills. Uh, we do have some uh, concerns about uh, establishing regulatory frameworks that um, may impair entry and expansion in competition, both in the e-commerce market and even in the um, brick and mortar or in the offline market. Um, since we have a number of uh, a number of things that we'd like to raise and it's a bit detailed, uh, we hope we'll be allowed to submit our position paper. But I just like to go through several things uh, this afternoon. Um, first is, uh, we would like to recommend or suggest to the committee to um, at least consider uh, to include in the policy objective uh, the establishment of fair competition, of course, um, that, uh, that is in Section 2. Um, we echo the concerns of Senator Marcos, actually, when she mentioned the, uh, we, we would like to clarify so, uh, how we define digital products. Um, Senator Marcos did mention that uh, there are several other um, international bodies which have dealt with um, online transactions separately than um, digi digitally transacted products, for example. So th those might be two different kinds of markets that we might be dealing with. So. Um, Digital transactions, for example, uh, could be defined as those transactions which uh, are digitally uh, offer goods or services for sale and purchase over the internet. So this would cover the range of products and services already listed and also leave room for other forms of products and services that could be transacted over the internet um, later on. Uh, but things that we can't actually contemplate on just yet. You know, as, as technologies, as our technology progresses, there might be some products that we haven't exactly covered. So that suggestion might uh, might be plausible. So um, on the, another thing, uh, like I mentioned earlier, one of the things that we are a little concerned about is uh, the kinds of regulatory frameworks that we will establish with these bills. So we just want to make sure that uh, the kinds of assistance or uh, incentives that are given to uh, the uh, digital uh, market players uh, would not be discriminating against the traditional brick and mortar firms. So if there are certain leeways we can actually offer the same way to the brick and mortar firms, then we feel that this might be advantageous also uh, and would actually encourage entry to, for example, the retail market. Um, as to the jurisdictional issues, I think it was uh, briefly mentioned by Secretary Mon earlier, uh, Mon Lopez earlier. Um, as for the PCC on, the, on our part, uh, we believe uh, based on a reading of the of the two bills, um, competition-related matters involving online transactions can still be addressed by the Commission, by the PCC, in accordance with uh, our mandate under the PCA. Uh, the PCA. So anti-competitive conduct can occur in the online marketplace. That's that's obvious. Um, I'm pretty sure a lot of us have already heard of the different cases that the US uh, FTA, DOJ, have been filing and even in the EU uh, against the big platforms, the what we call the FANGs. And um, so vertical restraints may impose restrictions or retail on retailers selling uh, manufacturers products, for example, etc. So one of the things that we, we usually 
um, uh, suggests to uh, for legislators is actually uh, placing the FRAN terms in the legislation itself, which is the fair, reasonable, and non-discriminatory um, terms uh, should be a mandatory um, part of contracts between, for example, uh, the platforms and the retailers that they will be uh, they will be hosting. Um, I think that would be all for now, Mr. Chair. Uh, we will be submitting our formal position paper as soon as we can, as soon as the uh, commission gives the go signal. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Thank you. Thank you, Attorney uh, Disagun. So we will uh, be awaiting your written position uh, position paper inputs. And not only from the PCC, but from all those uh, interested, we welcome uh, you sending us uh, position papers. So can we now, if there are no questions to, uh, directed to the PCC, let me now go to the next on my list is the DOJ. Uh, Jingel, do we have DOJ? Sir, wala pa po sila, sir. Di pa po answer. Oh. Chair, sorry. Ah, yeah. One question lang sa PCC. Santa Gaetano, yes. Yeah. Um, Attorney Faye, are you there? Yes. Yeah. Um, you, you mentioned no, that one of the things you look at is that uh, uh, there's not a um, unfair competition or advantage um, on, on, for online sellers versus brick and mortar stores. Is, is, did I hear you right? Um, that is in terms of the regulatory uh, framework that we might be establishing, uh, Madam Chair, uh, much like what uh, was mentioned earlier uh, there may be um, there may be parts of the registration process for example that we can already do online for everyone so if we're going to do it online for example uh, if we're going to do an online registration for online sellers it might be advantageous for us to do the same for brick and mortar sellers if it's possible, this is yes. uh, yeah. at least to facilitate. Yeah, well, I, yeah. Oh, I see your point, but I mean, I assume that because I, I mean, if you're gonna open it to to Philippine entrepreneurs, why would you just open it to those who just have an online business? So that's a, just that's exactly just what you're assuring. That's what you're ensuring that you don't open it for a particular segment. You open it to all, whether they have existing brick and mortar stores or they don't, right? That, that's correct, Senator. Ken. Okay, and obviously your job requires that you ensure that there is no regulatory um, intervention or regulation that makes it unfair competition. Now that's basically your job, right? That's right. Uh, that's right. Okay. okay. So a provision, a provision that holds a um, that holds a online platform solidarity liable uh, for any, um, I guess. Uh, uh, erroneous sale of products or, or bad practice, whatever, but that holds them solidarily liable with an online merchant would put them at a disadvantage because I'm not aware of any law that holds the malls solidarily liable with any of their store tenants, correct? That is correct, uh, Senator Cayetano. That, that could be, it could be a red flag for us uh, when if we... So it's... That's in the house version also. So did you flag that? Um, we made a general um, comment so far, uh, Senator Cayetano, about the different regulatory um, uh, procedures that might uh, impair competition in the market through this legislation. Okay, I'm just saying it's something I noticed right away, and I, I don't think I'm a anti-competitive expert, no? So I'd, I'd like to really uh, ask you to take a closer look at this because that, that provision really, like, struck me, you know, it's, like, really, really uh, glared at me, like, whoa, why would you do this? Um, and, and, and it then would entail, that, that just opens up a whole lot of responsibilities for any platform. Like, um, I'm an entrepreneur at heart, no? Just for the information of everybody. I, I, I was a Change. Change um, queen is my, my self tag to myself. I made more money in the Change before uh, while I was working at the same time as a 
lawyer. Okay, so just just to give a little bit of background, why this is of so much interest to me, and um, and uh, in, in in conversations I've had about this is that the desire is to make this a safe place and to level up the the kind of uh, sellers. But you know, the, what do you mean by quality of sellers? The there's chunge people, and they're not they're not any less sellers than somebody who has a store in the mall. So all of these things have to be defined. Eh? Like that's why I li- I try to listen very intently to the words that we use because um, we might have different objectives and at the end of the day, um, put some at a disadvantage over others. So um, I bring that up because we really want, I, I was telling DTI in a previous discussion I had with them, um, I'm not aware that we have been able to regulate the Changi market and a lot of people, there are, there are different opinions about it. Um, and then we jump into online. So again, um, ano lang, uh, equal playing field then, di ba? We regulate one, we promote one. Let, let's regulate all, we promote all. But then there's also the thought that, but then we really want to promote online. No? So, so are you then willing to incentivize that by regulating less? I mean, we really have to go into the details of this to determine, uh, are we all on board on what we want to do? Di ba? At what point is it anti Competitive, anti-competition, but at what point do you consider it acceptable because it's incentivizing the kind of business that we like? Um, for those who sell their products in the provinces, this might be their only opportunity to sell it uh, in, in the metropolitans and worldwide. So on that note, it might be, okay, it might be an acceptable exception to the anti- anti-competitive laws that we have. So I'm just bringing that out so that we have all our experts here weigh in on this. I, I don't have any, you know, um, conclusions yet, although, although I do have some thoughts on it and, and you know, it'll come together hopefully for all of us as we move along. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Chair. Win, Senator Win. Yes, if I may, uh, I may uh, also add on to uh, what Senator P mentioned earlier. Uh, this is actually a dilemma of the future, maybe the current and the future. Uh, there's a lot of online platform right now. A case in point will be Uber and Grab, in which uh, they present themselves as only a uh, mediation or a uh, a, uh, a platform intermediary between the users and the suppliers. And uh, there are cases where in um, uh, this is not up to par or the service is not what uh, the users expected, who then becomes uh, liable to that. Uh, and this is actually a current uh, dilemma of, of many jurisdictions. Uh, in this case, where uh, online platforms are thriving, you know, we have Shopee, we have Lazada, we have Amazon, we have eBay. Um, they also have a online marketplace, Mr. Chair, wherein they don't own the products. Uh, a supplier sells the products, but the suppliers are all over the world. Some of them are in, in China, some of them are in Indonesia, and uh, it becomes a uh, an issue and a problem when the products that uh, our buyers buy here will not be uh, what uh, it is described over uh, the marketplace. So, uh, wala pong habol yung ating buyers because the only remedy here is to contact the online platform and uh, the online platform, um, in, in this case, doesn't have any liability. So the one left holding the bag will be the users or the buyers in this case. So uh, this is something that uh, Bill is uh, intending to to solve by uh, holding the um, uh, online platform, uh, sorry, entirely liable, so that there will be a strict. Um, monitoring of those uh, suppliers selling in their marketplace. Um, again, it's a, it's a dilemma that is uh, quite prevalent in many jurisdictions, but uh, the objective of the bill is to, first and foremost, protect our buyers. You know? So that's why it's included in the bill. But uh, we'll listen to the experts and to DTI as to what are the current trends in this. Uh, again, no, it's not limited to retail, Mr. Chair. You have Uber and Grab for transport. You have Hotel booking, hotel booking platforms, you have airline booking platforms, you have service booking platforms, you have 
everything, there's a booking platform, right? But who is that holding the bag at the end of the day? It's really the, the consumers and the users, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you to all of you. We will, we will solve this dilemma in due time. <laughs> Ayusin natin yan. That's why we will uh, listen to experts. We will look at real life uh, experiences. Ganun din. Di ba? Meron din tayong mga consumer groups na inimbita para nga mak makapagsalita din sila. So, okay. So, we'll move on. Uh, can we now listen to the National Privacy Commission? Uh, there are two lawyers, I think, online. Attorney Vida Bocar and Attorney Francis C. Yes. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair, uh, Senator, uh, Co-Chair Senator Caetano, Senator Gachalian, the primary author, Senator Amy Marcos, and uh, Sec. Ramon Lopez. I apologize. I believe uh, I encountered some technical glitches uh, regarding my camera, so I cannot um, turn it on. It's not connecting at the moment, and I fear I might lose connection if I um, re-log in for purposes of turning on my camera. So... Um, uh you yes. you are you are a very private person. Okay, ayaw mo ayaw mo pagpakita ng itsura mo. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. So, for on behalf of the National Privacy Commission, uh uh, with regard to this bill, the Senate bill, we thank you for um, getting us, uh, for having us as a uh, part of the resource persons for the government. And uh, we recognize that uh, everyday transactions right now are being done currently in digital platforms, specifically, as mentioned earlier by the earlier speakers, the manner of availing um, goods and services. And uh, with this method, this shift comes the inevitability of collecting, using, sharing, analyzing, and otherwise processing uh, personal, even sensitive personal information at times of individual consumers or what we call in a data privacy act, the data subjects. While all these may be essential for participation in this emerging digital economy, we must always be reminded of the required protection of data privacy rights while at the same time ensuring the free flow of information for innovation as declared under the Data Privacy Act of 2012. So one way to increase trust in digital services is by adhering faithfully to the general data privacy principles, which are transparency, legitimate purpose, and proportionality when processing personal data. So in this case, we must go beyond getting consent. We must not put unnecessary burden on the consumers with do-it-yourself safeguards for their data privacy. These must already be embedded in all digital platforms and personal data processing systems by default. And while consumers have their own responsibilities in keeping their own personal data safe, this comes with a concomitant responsibility on the part of personal information controllers, such as the online e-commerce platforms, online merchants, and the government to provide adequate information and to educate consumers. And more importantly, it is most ideal for all that digital platforms themselves should have the necessary mechanisms built in place to secure personal data of consumers. So with this, we support the provisions of Senate Bill 1591, recognizing data privacy rights in its declaration of policy, as well as in the code of conduct provisions, as well as the development of an online dispute uh, resolution platform, which is adopting a privacy by design. And so uh, I believe similar to uh, what Attorney Faye mentioned, uh, we were also invited uh, in the House Committee uh, regarding similar provisions, we will be submitting our uh, formal position paper containing mostly the similar matters. I believe um, in the House uh, House Bill, uh, Mr. Chair, we submitted several um, additional uh, contributions as to the definitions of um, not just limiting it to consumer, uh, customer to customer transactions, but including um, several, for instance, business to business or business to consumer transactions and um, amending several uh, minor definitions as to the definition of um, data privacy rights and some provisions on privacy by design, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for your in anticipation of your uh, position paper. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you. Uh, Secretary Lopez, I was informed by our committee secretary that you were raised and before yeah. Right. Representative uh, spoke. Yes, sir. Secretary Lopez, please. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, quick reaction lang ako dun sa valid points raised by Senator Wynn and uh, Senator Pia. Uh, that, that really the the practice uh, of registering, for example, applies to all, uh, whether they're online or brick and mortar. All the regulations can will be applied to all in the same way that we can give incentives applied to all. For example, this thing of uh, giving two two-year income tax uh, holiday 
uh, dito sa mga micro SMEs, for example, uh, they they can be registered, but they can avail of the BMBE, the two-year income tax holiday. They can be applied also for online sellers. So that's the idea. Uh, whether we want to make it three years, then there there will just be a uh, uh, there will just be a need to amend the law. <clears throat> Pagdating naman po dun sa question on uh, 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 who, how can we apply yung, yung, yung self consumer protection? Basically, even if it's an online platform, while they are really a platform at iba yung seller and connecting it to the buyer, really the, the purpose of having major platform really is to do a value added. And what's value added? The traceability, the fact that they should be able to screen at least the sellers. Plus, of course, in these platforms, there are the ratings methodology yung better malaban mo kung itong seller na to trustworthy etc this this these methods can can all can all uh, improve yung uh, trust uh, the element of trust uh, online transaction because hanggang wala yung mga ganung uh, trust uh, sa consumer ensuring consumer protection maraming nag-aalangan pa ren magtransact sa, sa sa online and that, that those are some of the reasons and therefore Anything that we do here, Mr. Chairman, we'll have to improve that uh, confidence level and trust factor. And that can be done by the, uh, the formal, the, the registration, the traceability, uh, para mahahabol yung mga, mga, may mga complaints, uh, Mr. Chairman. So that, and that is uh, true to, again, whether it's brick and mortar and, and, and of course, for online platforms. Uh, thank you for Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. So we will now proceed. Uh, do we have PNP? Ah, no. Okay. So, wala. so, okay. Next would be the Optical Media Board. Attorney Ansel Bayan, Adriano. Uh, Ansel? Good afternoon, Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, if the Senate uh, Secretary to allow us, we have a, uh, a short uh, presentation. Yes, yes, go ahead. Thank you. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair, uh, to the Honorable Senators, the committee members. Uh, may we present to you our uh, very short presentation on the issues and threats on digital media as related to uh, what is being discussed this afternoon. I'm Attorney Ancel Adriano, the current chair and CEO of the Optical Media Board. Our next slide, please. So with the emergence of the e-commerce market, uh, this provided businesses a new opportunity given its faster and efficient way for consumers to access the local and global markets. E-commerce platforms and the convenience of mobile phones and tablets further increased the reach of many business markets. Unfortunately, online shopping has also opened a new upsurge of intellectual property piracy. E-commerce sites and social media platforms became huge enablers for pirates and counterfeiters. The nature of e-commerce plat e platforms make it easy for pirates and counterfeiters alike to hide in private, dedicated marketplaces or move between different territories to avoid capture. So our first challenge is online piracy. Online piracy in the Philippines is rising to what we term epidemic proportions, threatening the film and the software industry the most. With respect to software, uh, you would see on your screen uh, a screenshot of some of the items that uh, we discovered on uh, current platforms. Uh, these are selling uh, various items that are found for uh, the Adobe uh, software that are being sold, as I've said, 1,607 items found for Adobe. Next slide, please. This one, uh, selling the Adobe software for only 18 pesos because it's a cracked version only. 
Next slide. This one also for Adobe, another pirated one. Uh, for Microsoft, we found 5,060 items being uh, sold. These are all counterfeit also. Next slide. Next slide, please. All right. Uh, for Microsoft Office installed in USBs, uh, we also uh, discovered so many items being sold online. This is just one of them. Being sold for 860 pesos. Next slide, please. For Microsoft Office Professional Pass, uh, this one purportedly can be installed on multiple devices. Also installed in USB. Next one, next slide. Please. For AutoCAD, uh, which you would probably know is a very expensive software, we found 92 items being sold in the internet uh, for very, very cheap prices. One is uh, being sold only for as low as 40 pesos. This one is being sold for 200 pesos. But you would also notice the varying degrees of prices that are being sold across the internet. This one is selling USB installer package for 2,500 pesos only. Um, this one is selling premium presets for premium pro and Lightroom, 500 pesos only. Uh, for this one, uh, they're selling Wii games. These are software games. Uh, you would see uh, how many of them had been pirated already and being sold over the internet for 10 pesos only per game. Also, the, these are uh, software games being sold uh, very cheap over the internet. I think this is in Facebook. PS2 CD games, again, uh, they're pirated copies, only for 250 pesos. Uh, for movies, uh, there are also a bunch of uh, sellers online. This one is selling 4K versions, uh, Blu-ray rip movies, supposedly, also very cheap. These are uh, obviously pirated copies as well. And then this one, uh, which is uh, contained in the Google Drive, selling for only 50 pesos for a three-month subscription. This one also, uh, pirated versions for 20 pesos, 1080p copies of movies. Uh, last year, uh, there were a bunch of uh, sites selling Hello, Love, Goodbye versions, also pirated. Also, Marvel movies for only 20 pesos. Next, please. And then external hard drives with HD movies, also pirated ones, being sold over at the internet. And external hard drives up to one terabyte containing 500 gigabytes of movies. This one, uh, you can see, uh, it's a 32 gigabyte USB with uh, free movies as well, being sold for only 500 pesos. 
and this one uh, 1080 version of full HD DVD or USB flash drive movies for only 100 pesos. We were also able to uh, discover uh, legal streaming devices offering free movies as well for only 1,400 pesos. And well, uh, some of you may have also encountered this one uh, selling links uh, over at uh, Facebook for free movies. All right. This is a uh, website of uh, a pirate that we were able to apprehend last September 10, 2019 via an entrapment operation that was selling uh, pirated movies over at the internet. This one also is another uh, software uh, movie pirate that we apprehended last November uh, via entrapment likewise. Um, by the way, those two are uh, currently uh, facing charges before our courts. Now, uh, with respect to the risks and threats, we would like to uh, make mention that uh, these pirates obviously would be uh, or what we face would be the financial fraud that we, that's being uh, uh, perpetrated by them, as well as the proliferation of malicious code threats such as viruses, worms, and Trojan horses, phishing, data privacy threats, and uh, most obviously, a profit loss for our legitimate copyright owners. Our second challenge, of course, would be the unregulated sale and distribution of uh, Imported storage devices, mastering equipment, streaming devices, set-up boxes, as well as uh, imported books with CDs and DVDs. Uh, with all due respect to our friends from Lazada, uh, we uh, recently also found this on their website. Uh, various uh, storage devices and writing equipment that are being sold over at the platform, but unfortunately, uh, these sellers have no prior license or permits from the optical media. Board. Also, uh, selling CD publishers, which is uh, which are uh, regulated items uh, by OMB, are being sold uh, without the appropriate licenses or permits. Next slide, please. We also found almost 900,000 items uh, of USBs found uh, in the platforms, online platforms, selling regulated items without the necessary license or permit from the optical media board. And over 32,000 items found uh, for HDD. We'll make this very quick. Uh, still more I more uh, regulated items being sold without the licenses or permits. Next one. And 1,524 items found for streaming devices, setup boxes, and so on and so forth. Uh, last man, the game is a dulo. I think the, the committee has done just to sum it up, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, for 2019, we were able to confiscate approximately 40,000 pieces of USBs, uh, SD cards, and internal hard disk drives uh, uh, from various sellers uh, and importers, uh, valued at uh, over 20 million pesos. And we are only talking of uh, USBs, SD cards, and HDDs that are uh, being sold online. For which reason, Mr. Chair, uh, on behalf of the agency, we are in full support of the bill and uh, we are really looking forward to its passage. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Thank you, and uh, we need a copy of your presentation.
Attorney. Yes, Mr. Chair. We will be uh, furnishing you by uh, email a copy of our report and our uh, uh, position paper as well. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay, so the DFP is ready. Yeah. And Shapi will we will allow them to and carousel yata and we will allow them to react to the to the uh, eye opening presentation of the optical media board uh, later. Okay. Mr. Chair. Hey, who is that? Who is that? Ah, uh, see. Uh, your uh, <laughs> your seat, mate. <laughs> Mr. Chair, uh, that's. Uh, you know, our, our, our proposal aims to promote honest online entrepreneurs. Uh, admittedly, uh, there are a lot of online platforms and marketplaces that uh, online entrepreneurs can sell into. And it's good no? because it aggregates all the different products, it creates critical mass. But uh, I think Attorney Adriano presented very clearly that uh, abusive abusive entrepreneurs can also take advantage of lack of regulation, Mr. Chair. And we don't want our country to be a hotbed of pirated DVDs, pirated movies, pirated softwares. Uh, in the absence of uh, any regulation, we can be a dumping ground for uh, all these pirated items. And uh, obviously, these pirated items violates the intellectual property rights that we have uh, being, we have, a, we have a, that we are, we are protecting you know, through various laws. That's why, Mr. Chair, in Section 7 of our proposal, uh, letter C, it's written there under the Code of Conduct that uh, online platforms should comply with applicable laws and regulations, especially the protection of intellectual property rights. So, in a nutshell, Mr. Chair, we want to promote honest entrepreneurs. But as you can see, uh, as demonstrated by Attorney Adriano, uh, we're becoming a dumping ground for dishonest and abusive uh, individuals. And that's what we want to, uh, to prevent um, because it's creating an a un, unfair playing ground or unfair environment for honest entrepreneurs. Kawawa naman po yung mga honest entrepreneurs. Kaya ako si Kaya nga, advice ko kay Attorney Anselmo Adriano, eh wag na ho siya mag-grade sa, sa Green Hills. Useless sa ho, mag-grade na lang ho siya sa Lazada at sa, <laughs> sa Shopee. Pero kailangan niyo ho ng ticket papuntang China, Mr. Chair, dahil nasa China lahat yan. No? So, Mr. Chair, that's, uh, I thank uh, Attorney Adriano for that presentation because that's clearly what we want to prevent. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Sabi ko nga, eye opening yun kasi... Um, Pinakita sa atin yung the usual suspects natin like counterfeit, uh, fake, uh, pirated. Pero meron palang other aspect of our laws that there are some products which need to be registered before they could can be sold. So iba yun, iba naman yun. That's, let's say that's, that's a purely Philippine uh, requirement. Let's say, pero it's a requirement. So medyo nabuksan ng mata ko roon. Uh, marami ang fake pero meron din palang product which need to be registered sa OMB. And uh, Section 21, no, uh, Attorney Adriano, you are also an implementing agency sa, sa bill, Section 21. Okay, so that was really an eye-opening presentation. That's why I, I'm requesting for a copy and position paper na rin, sir, if, uh, if you have, uh, Attorney Adriano. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So, can we now proceed? Uh, DOJ is ready. Si, sinong representative? At, uh, Jingle, sinong representative ng DOJ? Sir, si State Council Nurmi na po. She's on board na po, sir. State Council... Council Nurmi na. Na, yes, ma'am. Ma'am, State Council... DOJ, please. Nasa list. Attorney, please oh, mute you. your mic. I see, Attorney. <laughs> Can we he can we hear her, Jinga? Well, Mr. Attorney, hindi pa rin po namin kayo marinig. Sige, let's give the DOJ time to fix their connection. Uh, okay. Can I can I go uh, instead go to 
MTRCB and dito yes, ba sir. sino Yes sir Si I have the name ah okay si Attorney Stress Quito and Chief Legal Affairs Yes um, Sir Ma magandang uh, hapon Mr. Chair uh, magandang hapon sa ating mga resource persons as well sa committee uh, members and to the chair a uh, uh, sponsor of the bill Mr. Chair, uh, nagpapasalamat ang MTRCP sa pag-invite uh, po ninyo sa amin in regard to the, to this, uh, to the hearing of this bill. Uh, considering that um, ang issue namin is the enforcement of the regulatory jurisdiction of MTRCP over motion picture content. Ang uh, motion picture content tayo, uh, Mr. Chair, is defined in uh, MTRCP law as a series of pictures projected the screen, uh, whether with uh, color, black and white, with sound or silent, regardless of the mechanism or regardless of the medium. So in other words, Mr. Chair, if a particular material contains a motion picture, even if it is distributed electronically, or as uh, a pinag-usapan through the internet, that is a motion picture within the jurisdiction of MTRCP. And uh, as early as um, 2018, Mr. Chair, we are already engaged with our regulatory counterpart in different uh, regions, as well as the different stakeholders for the implementation by MTRCB on how to regulate motion picture content distributed via uh, the internet. Yung mga nakikita natin, Mr. Chair, yung Netflix, Amazon Prime, iFlix, and the rest. Okay, those are the video on demand platform. Uh, in 2019, Mr. Chair, we invited the uh, uh, representatives from the BIR, from the SEC, as well as from the DT DTI, because we are ready to implement, Mr. Chair, the uh, regulation over those materials. But our concern is about compliance by those entities to be regulated of other laws of the Philippines, like, for example, Mr. Chair, the BIR law on registration, the SEC law on doing business, the uh, mayor's permit regulation. We, when we discuss with the DTI, Mr. Chair, we mentioned to the DTI that we, MTRCB, were very much willing to proceed with the regulation. But DT, DTI requested us through ASEC uh, Pacheco if we can, if we can um, uh, uh, hear the positions of BIR or the SEC first, because in so far as we are concerned, Mr. Chair. Our regulation covers those materials. Only that na hamper po yung aming pag roll out because of we don't want to create an impression, Mr. Chair, that MTRC will, we will be violating the other uh, laws of the Philippines. No, na halimbawa si Netflix, irerehistro sa MTRCB, and yet Netflix won't comply with the SEC uh, rule or law on the doing business, won't comply with the BIR law on registration won't comply with the uh, local government uh, regulations mayor per, mayor's permit. So those are the matters that uh, that hampers us. But as we speak right now, Mr. Chair, there is a necessity for us to proceed with the regulation, especially during the lockdown. Most of us, ang nagmintay ng sanity po natin yung mga streaming services, eh. Netflix, iFlix, lahat ng mga movies na nakikita natin. But all of those movies, Mr. Chair, unrated po yun eh. And when the entity is registered with MTRCB, three things ang pwedeng mangyari na ma-assure natin yung ating uh, uh, viewers. First, yung napapanood ay age appropriate. That's one. Second, wala pong prohibited content na makikita ka. And third, yung pinapalabas ay mismong authorized yung distributor. Yung pinabanggit po, ng uh, OMB, ni Attorney Adriano. Tama po yun eh. May mga motion pictures na nakalagay doon sa setup box. Those are unrated materials, Mr. Chair. And under the MTRCB law, those are prohibited materials. So you cannot distribute that in the Philippine territory. So sa ngayon po, habang tayo nag-uusap, we want to be guided, Mr. Chair, because nakakalungkot, uh, there is a similar bill filed in uh, House of Representatives pertaining to this matter, no? And when we inquire, when we post a query, Mr. Chair, if uh, the MTRCB jurisdiction is contemplated sa, sa bill, 
sadly, the committee chairman uh, told us that uh, no, we're not being contemplated, despite the fact that there is a mention of the video on demand uh, provision in the bill. As, as in this bill, uh, Mr. Chair, there is also a provision, the scope of uh, this bill includes the video on demand. And for us, Mr. Chair, streaming services like Netflix are video on demand platform. And we have to regulate those platforms. We have to ensure that those materials being shown on those platforms are compliant with the MTRC video. Uh, kaya kami humihidi ng guidance, Mr. Chair. If it is the position of this committee that it doesn't include or contemplate matters that are within the regulatory jurisdiction of uh, MTRC Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Anong sagot natin doon sa tanong ng MTRCB? <laughs> tama, mukhang tama kayo sir, nasa, nasa coverage, di ba? Uh, section 4. Paragraph. Oh, digital media providers including video on demand and then th those are movies right pati tv shows diba pati tv shows right sir that, that, that's correct uh, mr chair uh, kasi ang, ang uh, definition po no ng uh, motion picture under the mtrc law is that uh, it is a a a a um, uh, a picture projected on a screen in rapid succession so, hindi po siya nagka-qualify, Mr. Chair, kung yan ay isang palabas sa TV, palabas sa movie, advertisement, uh, or trailer man yan. Regardless, Mr. Chair, eh, ang kanyang binabanggit ng MTRCB law, law is as long as it is a motion picture content, then MTRCB has jurisdiction over that content regardless kung saan video mo sa pinalabas. And in this case, Mr. Chair, it appears to us that, that internet is just a medium. Hindi porte sa internet pinalabas ang isang pelikula, ay therefore wala na siya sa jurisdiction ng MTRCB because that is not the contemplation of MTRCB law. Kaya kami po, kami po ay natutuwa at uh, nagagalak dahil na inditahin po kami ninyo. And we want to be guided, Mr. Chair, no? first, kung kasama kami dito sa bill na to. Pangalawa, kung baka po meron makatulong sa amin on how we need to proceed with the regulation right now of uh, video on demand platforms because in so far as we're concerned, ready na po yung aming uh, working draft. This is a matter of implementation and there is just a harming provision pertaining to registration which we cannot resolve. And I think I see, I, 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 I see an uh, asset patch ko that uh, yun po na-discuss namin eh. Paano ang registration issue? Because sa amin kasi, we want, to, we want to register lang but we cannot compel them, Mr. Chair. Uh, for example, Netflix. Netflix is not doing business in the Philippines in so far as physical, but under the SEC law, it is clearly doing business in the Philippines. But you cannot see Netflix in the Philippines, Mr. Chair. So the first question that we pose when we discuss with ASEC Pacheco is, first, how can we require Netflix to register in the Philippines? Wala sa Pilipinas eh. The, the product is being distributed online. Wala kang makikita kay Netflix na physical dito. So how can you require Netflix to register with the BIR? How can you require Netflix to obtain mayor's permit kung wala siya dito? So yun yung aming concern, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Mr. Chair? But definitely doing business with subscribers coming from the Philippines, based in the Philippines, and watching from the Philippines. Tama? Yes, Mr. Chair. Yes, Mr. Chair. Senator Aimee Marco. Yes, Mr. Chair, that's precisely the problem. Uh, sa palagay ko, yung bill ni Senator Gachalian tungkol sa tangible goods na binibenta online, ayos na ayos na yon. Kaya lang, re-recommend ko na sana ihiwalay yung problema natin sa digital media kasi masalimuot nga. And uh, to be fair to the Philippine jurisdiction, all over the world, everyone is having trouble with live streaming. And as we remain in lockdown with this pandemic, the reality is... Um, the creatives are getting ever more creative about putting pirated uh, and even legal material online. So 
uh, in-invoke ko sana na hiwalayin yung media section, hiwalayin pa, uh, aside from content, yung digital services na binabanggit sa Angara Bill naman. Kasi uh, although they can all be contained in the same bill, eh, sana ibang kapitulo yun. And then the other one pa, yung yun nga, yung sa payment portals, because truth be told, those are not that those are neither goods nor services being sold over the internet but are in fact mere modes of payment so dapat hiwalay na naman yun so siguro para malinis yung bill natin to the extent that we can uh, let's delineate properly thank you po well, at least uh, itong hearing na ito eh, it helped us uh, bring bring those uh, topics out the the, the the concept those concepts out digital media versus digital services versus payment portals you know? yeah. okay. yes mr chair yeah. Mr. Chair, ang, ang sabi nga nila sa hearing, magandaw daw yung hearing, we may not have asked, we may not have answered all the questions, but we certainly raised the level of confusion. Which we will all hold in due <laughs> we will Mr. Not... Chair, yes, just a quick yes, sir, yes, sir. Uh, just a quick reaction lang po kay uh, sa representative ng FTRCD. Mr. Chair, this goes to show that the internet has disrupted many of the things that we have been doing in the past and now it's totally different in terms of process and in terms of uh, acquiring services and goods. Uh, kagaya ho yung Netflix. Uh, how do you regulate uh, Netflix? Uh, mga movies, they just come to our TV sets without the uh, NPRCB rating it. So, so it, it, it's, very, it's very difficult because uh, the internet has opened the doors to uh, companies selling straight to our homes. And that's why laws like this, tend, the intention is also to update our regulatory uh, environment, update our laws, so that it can uh, somehow um, protect our consumers and also put some form of regular regulation in the goods and services being sold to our country. Uh, this is again in line of protecting our consumers, huh? protecting our our kids who, who are watching uh, Netflix in our homes. Dati ho, ang MTRCB, pag nag-relate sila sa mga sinihan, but our kids, they don't go to they don't go to uh, the movie houses anymore. Um, they watch uh, uh, they watch uh, video in their cell phones, in their computers, straight from Hollywood. So, medyo, and our laws are not uh, capable of regulating that. But, Mr. Chair, just to answer uh, the rep of MPRCB, what our proposal intends to do is uh, the coverage is limited to the buying and selling of video on demand. But the content, in so far as the content is concerned, whether that is rated R, rated 18, uh, ibang batas na yun talaga kailangan mo. Uh, it's not part of this law because that's a whole new different dimension altogether. That's what Senator Aimee mentioned. How, how about the provider, Senator Wynn? The provider of the service, the video on demand service, is the one subject to, to this bill, right? Yes, Mr. Chair. Yes. Yes, Mr. Chair. The uh, provider for the selling and buying. What if it provides all kinds of uh, classification na uh, may bawal na under Philippine law? Paano ngayon yun? Uh, that's, a, uh, that's something that uh, uh, we have to discuss, Mr. Chair, because the content side is a different, it's a different uh, environment altogether. No? What, uh, what type of content will be shown here? What type of rating that we should be doing on the content? But the selling, no? the selling of the uh, of the video, uh, that's the one uh, our bill intends to uh, regulate. Okay, and solve all of these things in due time. Huh? mag, uh, mag tayo, research and consult. Yes, sir. Uh, MTRCB, yes. Um, Mr. Chair, may uh, uh, konting uh, reply ng kami kay Kesar ka Win Gatchal yan. Sa, sa Korea po, Senator, Ang Netflix, lahat po ng content ng Netflix ay dumadaan sa prior review. 
Okay? And we don't want that kind of regulation here in the Philippines. Kagaya ng pinanggit ni Senator Amy Marcos Kadina. We want an environment of growth. And in fact, during our engagement with the different uh, regulators in the ASEAN region, ang, ang uh, commonality is uh, let's, let's, let's allow the streaming service to flourish, but how to balance that with the regulatory mechanism? And um, doon sa issue po ng uh, pagbebenta ng mga videos, the MTRC below is clear, Mr. Chair, that no material shall be sold or distributed in the Philippines without being passed upon by MTRCB. So in other words, if the entity that is selling the material, then that, that, that entity first must be registered with the MTRCB. And second, the material being sold must be duly passed upon by uh, the MTRCB. Otherwise, it is a clear violation of the MTRCB law, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Okay, so MTRCB, you should be actively involved in this uh in the processing of this bill because as i see it it is also an existential problem for the mtrcb oh, kasi pwedeng lumabas ngayon na hindi na kayo kailangan ah, tandaan nyo yan ah. <laughs> so pag-isipan natin mabuti yan kasi sabi ni Sen senator win it's either we we update our laws to catch up with technology or we enforce our archaic laws and hold back technology technological uh, progress so anyway ano ko lang yan na naisip ko lang basta please uh, be be actively involved dito ha, in the in this bill okay so the DOJ si state council Normina Hajula Tadifa will just submit position paper of the DOJ tama sa, sa committee secretary because <laughs> connection thank you for to the DOJ oh can we move on to the SEC, SEC? Wala, walang SEC jingle? Sir, wala po. CDA po, sir. CDA. Operative Development Authority. Please. Uh, Mr. Chair, good afternoon po. Uh, I'm Edmond Acosido representing uh, Yusek Ravanera po from CDA. Sir, yes, Mr. Acosido, please go ahead. Yes, sir. Uh, first off, uh, I would like to greet the members of the committee, then, sir, uh, to uh, Senator Aimee, uh, Senator Pia, and Senator Wynne. Uh, good afternoon, po, as well as uh, Comsec Jingle. And ang hapon po. Uh, please allow me to uh, read the comments of uh, CDA with regards to the uh, Senate Bill 1591. Uh, so, uh, on behalf of Yusek Rabanera, I would like to express uh, our gratitude for allowing the authority to express its position on this uh, very important proposed legislation. Uh, at the outset, uh, CDA expresses its full support for the passage of the proposed legislation with due consideration of its uh, proposals and recommendations, which uh, we will submit to the committee secretary the full uh, a position paper after this uh, meeting. So, nevertheless, we share our aspiration uh, of the declared policy as well uh, as uh, expressed by the author of the bill, uh, Senator Gachalian, earlier. So, uh, we just have some uh, few comments regarding the bill, which uh, also uh, involves uh, the authority or CDA. So, first is regarding. Uh, Section 19 on tax exemption uh, on the provision of uh, SB 1591. Uh, the limited application of the first two years of tax exemption, uh, I believe uh, or we believe uh, it shall not uh, apply or it doesn't apply to cooperatives uh, because uh, co-ops are uh, exempted from taxes even after two years of operation uh, pursuant to the joint uh, rules and regulations uh, implementing Article 60, 61, and 144 of the Philippine Cooperative Code of 2008, and uh, as well as in relation to the National Internal Revenue Code. And, uh, another thing is that in Section 21 on the implementing agencies, uh, we would like to propose uh, if uh, the body would accept uh, the suggestion if CDA could be included among the implementing agencies uh, enumerated uh, in the bill. And lastly, 
under Section 23, on the penalties uh, indicated, uh, perhaps maybe we can also consider the use of a cooperative an entity not duly registered with CDA, it is uh, also punishable under Article 140 of uh, Republic Act 9520, in which uh, the penal provisions include uh, the following acts or omissions affecting cooperatives are hereby provided. So the use of the word cooperative by any person or persons or organization, unless duly registered as a cooperative under the code, except as provided for under Article 130 hereof. In case of any violation, the individual or individuals concerned or in the case of an organization, its officers and directors shall upon conviction each uh, suffer the penalty of imprisonment of not less than two years, nor more than five years and a fine not exceeding 20,000 pesos or both at the discretion of the court. So uh, those are our comments which uh, I think uh, also involves uh, uh, CTA and the rest we will just forward Mr. Chair to uh, the committee secretary to Ms. Jim. Thank you so much. So thank you, thank you. Uh, we will extend for 30 minutes uh, our new target uh, time for suspension at 3.30 p.m. Okay. So is Senator Bongo online? Jingel? Okay. Yes, Senator Bongo, well, just tell me if uh, Senator to make a statement. Let's continue. After. Okay, go, go. Senator Bongo, go ahead. Good. If in the of that. Good afternoon, uh, Mr. Chair and uh, distinguished uh, colleagues. Uh, the COVID-19 uh, crisis has led to the massive uh, contraction of our country's economy. But uh, despite all this, uh, the resilience of our countrymen is highlighted through their entrepreneurial spirit and innovation in consumerism in order to survive the effects of the current uh, crisis. Uh, it is for this reason that I express my uh, full support to the Senate Bill uh, 1591, authored by uh, Senator Chalian and Senator Nancy uh, Binay, otherwise known as the Internet uh, Transactions Act, which seeks to safeguard and protect our countrymen in various uh, transactions through the creation of the e-commerce bureau, which will promote and oversee the e-commerce uh, sector. In addition, the bill also seeks to provide tax exemption from local and national taxes of newly registered micro enterprises engaged in uh, e-commerce. Protectahan po natin ang ating mga maliliit na negosyo at ating mga online na uh, sellers. Ang gusto lamang ay maghanap uh, buhay para sa kanilang mga pamilya, lalong-lalo na po ngayong panahong ito. It is my uh, position that the Internet Transactions Act will uh, complement the bill I found, namely Senate Bill 1738 or the E-Governance Act of 2020, which mandates the government to establish an integrated, interconnected, comparable uh, information and resource uh, sharing and communications network, which uh, spans the in, uh, entirety of the national and uh, local government. It uh, also seeks to establish an internal records management information system and information database and digital portals for the delivery of uh, public uh, services as we prepare for the new normal the transition to e-governance uh, be becomes uh, crucial particularly uh, the digitalizing of uh, government uh, processes which will help e-commerce businesses in their registration and compliance with the government's uh, permit and uh, requirements E-governance will also reduce red tape, eliminate corruption, enhance transparency, provide safe and convenient delivery of services to the people, and encourage citizen feedback and participation in uh, governance. Po uh, yung gusto natin mangyari na mabawasan po yung uh, red tape at uh, pinapatulog pa yung mga dokumento at mas mahirapan pa ang ating mga kababayan, lalong-lalo na po sa panahon ng pandemya. Through the E-Governance Act of 2020, 
digitalizing government processes such as uh, citizen services and business uh, transactions, among others, will ensure that the country can cope up with the physical and mobility limitations needed to slow the spread of the diseases. Uh, this will also ensure that uh, the business processes and transactions uh, in the country will remain uh, seamless and uh, full, fully operational despite the uh, pandemic uh, threats. Uh, as I have uh, said before, we need to carefully balance our economic and health uh, objectives by ensuring that uh, government services remain operational by maximizing available technologies. We can help Filipinos uh, easily adapt to the new normal, help our uh, economy recover and mitigate the health, uh, health uh, risk. This is the new age of evolution uh, Mr. Chair, let us all unite to adapt to the new normal and heal us one. Or hindi lang po yun, na uh, adapt to the new normal po, sana'y bumalik tayo sa dating normal kung saan po natin mayakap ang ating uh, kapwa Pilipino. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Senator Bongo. Okay, uh, next we will listen to the Inputs of the Banco Central ng Pilipinas. Sino ba nandito? Hmm. Banco Central. Yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, this is uh, Raymond Estioco, Banco Central ng Pilipinas. Uh, I have several of my colleagues with me here in the hearing. Uh, first, uh, I would like to greet a good afternoon to the Honorable Chair and the uh, Distinguished members of the Joint Senate Committees, uh, the Banco Central of Philippines welcomes and supports the aims of Senate Bill 1591 or the proposed Internet Transactions Act. The proposed bill can serve as a good starting point in regulating e-commerce in the country and fostering greater competitiveness within the region. It may also serve to further enhance the competitiveness of the Philippine micro, small, and medium enterprises, which in turn serve as the backbone of our country, more so with the adoption of e-commerce. Uh, consistent with the objective of the proposed bill of promoting growth of e-commerce through building of trust between online sellers and consumers, it bears emphasis that the BSP has issued enabling regulations to foster the development of and confidence in e-commerce. Notable among these are the establishment of real-time electronic fund transfer, known as the InstaPay, and the BATS electronic fund transfer, which is PESONET, both under the BSP's National Retail Payment System. And also, we have streamlined the licensing requirements to for the electronic pay, payment and financial services. And also, as part of our commitment uh, to promote broad and convenient access to financial services and to protect the interests of the general public, the BSP has also enhanced the financial consumer protection framework of BSP supervised financial institutions. Under the revised guidelines, BFS, BSFIs are expected to establish policies and procedures that institutionalize consumer protection as an integral component of their corporate governance, culture, and risk management system. And this aims to ensure that financial service providers conduct ethical business practices and to discharge uh, and to discourage practices that may cause harm to the consumer in the conduct of their business. Honorable Chair, the BSP position paper on Senate Bill 1591 is forthcoming and we will send it to the committee soonest possible time. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Estioco, and uh, to all your colleagues who are at attending our, our hearing. Thank you. So, BIR?
view of eternal revenue represented by Mr. Larry Lan Barcelos. Ah, Bar no. Barcelos. Barcelos. Good afternoon, uh, Your Honors, uh, Chairman, and the members of the committee. Good afternoon to our fellow resource speakers, resource persons. Okay. Uh, the, the Bureau uh, for the past uh, months, uh, the various uh, revenue issuances have also, has also fall on uh, those engaged in online business transactions to register. This is uh, pursuant to the provision of the tax code. And uh, the present bill uh, also requires a registration of uh, uh, the, the business of those uh, on online transactions. So in so far as this uh, uh, requirement of the bill, Your Honor, we, we support the, the bill. And um, we also would like to add the provisions on Section 19 on the tax exempt provision uh, for newly registered micro enterprise engaged in e-commerce from all national taxes for the first two years. Uh, we, we, we would like to add that uh, there's already a BMBE law, the RA9178, that grants uh, income tax exemption to BMBEs uh, arising uh, from income generated from the operation of their uh, enterprise. This is uh, without a limitation or without a period, uh, unlike in the present uh, provision of the bill. You know. uh, thank you, Your Honor. That will be all. Thank you, Mr. Marcelo, for the inputs. Okay. Uh, automatic naman siguro, pag may tax liability, the BIR should really be the enforcer, di ba? Kasi well, as, when I read the bill, parang I, I got the impression na sumbungan ng bayan ng BIR eh. Pwede na yung DTI, pwede niya isumbong sa, sa BIR yung merchant. Pero I think with or without the sumbong, I think the BIR has the authority to collect the taxes when taxes are due. Tama po yes, yun? Your Honor. Oh? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, that's correct po, Your Honor. So the provision okay. saying that... Uh, the DTI uh, shall report those uh, non-registered uh, business will be subjected to the uh, rules of the BIR. That is, uh, we will be enforcing our uh, enforce, uh, tax audit and uh, assessment functions. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yes, uh, Your Honor. Next, Customs. Bureau of Customs. Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair, quick, ah. co quick, quick, ano lang, comment lang, no? Yes, Pia. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, I don't really need a response now, Mr. Chair, but could we, you know, I, I really need to spend more time on this. I'd like to follow your timeline. So, you know, comment lang now, but balikan na lang natin sa next hearing. Um, I save this question for BIR because if you look at the initial statement presentation of DTI about uh, online registration, one one click, eight minutes lang ang registration nila sa DTI. Uh, and then si SEC may problem for online registration in DTI. And then si SEC, is, so SEC is going in that direction, but we're not quite there yet. And then the other uh, agency involved in this process is BIR and the mayor's offices. No, If you look at the BIR requirements, um, it will require that they present their mayor's permit. And um, that's what we all we, we have to piece together, Mr. Chair, because to get a mayor's permit, and assuming more cities will come on for similar to Valenzuela, na online na sila, a lot of these, um, and maybe we can invite the mayor of Valenzuela, I'd be very happy to hear from him. A lot of these businesses that we are talking about that flourish during this time of COVID, the uh, young students, um, unemployed fresh graduates who are baking in the house, etc., cooking, a lot of these things will not be able to pass in the mayor's permit requirement dahil fire hazard to bake and uh, to produce food in commercial quantities in your household, diba? Uh, pag nakatira ka pa sa condo, lalo na, lalo na. But it is a reality that it is happening. So how do we weave that together? How do we go around that, no? Um, we want to be fair. We want to promote. Isa ako doon. I'm ordering from as many. Ang dami lang ang pagkain dito para lang makatulong. 
but hindi yan makakatanggap ng mayor's permit without with our current uh, uh, standards sa mayors for safety purposes. And without the mayor's permit, they will not get their BIR registration. So we need to tackle that. Hindi tayo pwedeng pikit mata na here are the requirements, let's move on. I park that, Mr. Chair, so that these agencies can come back to us with solutions, please. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Cynthia. Customs? Sino ba ulit yun? Okay. Director Jonathan po. Soriano. Jonathan? Soriano. Soriano. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Good afternoon po. Uh, good afternoon to to the Honorable Senators. Uh, good afternoon to the fellow government officials. For the customs, uh, we, have, we have already been in discussion with with online service providers regarding uh, how to facilitate the, the the release of goods for those uh, online transactions so the main concern for us is is how to enforce uh, the uh, our mandate on protecting protecting the Philippines from the entry of illegal goods. Also for the enforcement of IPR uh, and also the taxing of uh, the collection of duties for those goods which are deemed commercial in quantity and value. So we will, uh, we support the bill but uh, of course, uh, we will we will provide input on on how how we need uh, how do we enforce uh, the the protection of uh, or how do we enforce the safety of of the in entry of illegal drugs and illegal goods. So it's it's a balance between us uh we have discussed with with the providers and we we need to enforce a risk management uh, system so that goods with low risk can 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 be cleared immediately but for goods with uh uh with which are tag as risky will should be examined so for that we need uh, we need to work with the online providers in providing us with advanced information. So that's all, Mr. Chair. Uh, uh, Dr. Soriano, question? Yes. question. Can you yes, we buy from Lasad, for example, an article for coming? So when, when that item reaches our uh, doorstep, by uh, it, it, de it depends, sir. Uh, if the article has been uh, has been uh, tagged as a as a commercial or requiring the payment of duties and taxes, uh, Lazada will notify you on 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 the requirement to pay duties and taxes. Okay, so. Uh, we, the responsibility is on the tal the online responsible uh, to make sure that duties and the complexity niyan baka hindi na maintindihan ni consumer yes uh, also we are working on a way to to get the status of the shipment to the stakeholder or the the consumer because uh, uh, what the ex what the consumer experience is, the update is always uh, held by customs. Uh, we are always tagged in the status as the one causing the delay of the release of shipment. So the, the consumers never, uh, sometimes do not know that the shipment requires the payment of duties and taxes. So we will, we will be integrating a solution with the service providers to to 
to send updates to the stakeholder that their shipment are requires payment of duties and taxes. Pero as as of the moment, sir, yung mga big time na mga online platforms like Lazada and Shopee, they sell items made outside of the Philippines. Mm. As of the as of the moment, you have arrangements with them. Bayad yung duties and taxes doon. Yes po. Uh, if the commerce if it's commercial in quantity, may mga may mga online stores sila na sarili. So if they pay for duties and taxes for those they sell. Ah, do appear mga third party sellers nila in their market in their so-called marketplace na hindi hindi hindi, uh -huh. hindi nila malls. Bayad ba yung tax? Depends po sa inspection sa, sa examiner po namin. If the examiner deems the item taxable, uh, the item will be held. Ah, okay. But uh -huh. uh -huh. the, 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 the rules are in place. So, ganun, ganun ang ano. Yes. Uh -huh. The rules are uh -huh. in place. Minsan hindi natin i judgment call. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, yung, yung procedure lang on and the, how to speed up the mechanism to to pay the taxes or and notify the stakeholder yun po yung we work out namin kasi it's a very fast uh you the movement of goods is very fast no. so uh yun din yung uh, it's causing us uh bad publicity if the if the if the buyers are all uh, are are angry at us because we delayed their shipment. Uh -huh. Another th another thing causing you bad publicity is your so-called online system. Online, may nagreklamo na sa akin, online daw kayo, pero manual daw na ninyo pinaprocess yung online na uh, uh, fini-fill up. Is that, is that true? Uh... I, no, sir. Uh, because we have, uh, aside from the online submission, we have a ticketing uh, system in which they can get, uh, they can raise problem tickets and get status. Uh, however, uh, may mga, of course, the transition to the online solution, uh, nagkakaroon ng adjustment, sir. We, we are also fine-tuning the solution. Okay. Uh, to better meet but uh, uh yung to improve and be better serve the public sir separate as i as i am receiving uh, complaints i will just file the necessary resolution and let's have a separate hearing for uh, for the custom yes po sir uh, you're making a record that you know you're doing your best and then you are also really upgrading your system okay thank yes. you sir. thank you Thank you, sir. Thank you, your honors. Go now to the private sector. Uh, for the last uh, how many? Uh, 10, 10 to 12 minutes. Okay? Well, uh, let's give them time, especially especially who were given some bad uh, bad press, bad report. Kanina. Like, let's listen to Lazada and Shopee, uh, Carousel, and Salora. And then all the others from the private sector. We will run out of time. Thank you for uh, uh, attending the hearing as our lawyers. We have from the UP College of Law. We have from one consumer and then from the Philippine Retailers Association. We will definitely hold uh, another hearing uh, on this on this uh, particular subject matter. So please be present again in the in the next hearing. But for the for the last few minutes of our session time. Uh, our hearing time, let's give this to Lazada, Shopee, Zalora, Carousel, who, which were mentioned in the report of the OMB. Maybe they want to react to that report. So, sino, Lazada first? Lazada? Who is representing Lazada? Mm. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, here. It's uh, Ray Animurong, CEO of Lazada. Uh, Ray Animurong, sige. Go ahead, Ray. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Honorable members of the Senate, no, Chairman uh, Pimentel, Bill Sponsor, uh, Senator Gatchalian, Senator Caetano, Senator Marcos, Senator Go, and members of the government agencies, it's very honored to appear before you today as you deliberate on this very timely piece of legislation. Uh, Mr. Chair, as Lazada and all the MSMEs we enable are hugely impacted by this bill, 
I was hoping you would bear with me if I took eight minutes to share my thoughts. I know we are a bit short on time. Uh, I'm sharing my screen for a presentation, which I, I will share simultaneously with uh, my, 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 what I'm saying. Okay. Um, so many people don't know I began my professional career as a medical doctor. I became a doctor because I wanted to help people. But I quit being a doctor because I wanted to help more people. My grandfather was a heart doctor and one of the founders of Makati Medical Center, a pioneer in Philippine medicine. I idolized him and my desire to help people was seated at an early age by my Lolo, who would offer free medical services on weekends to poor patients. Uh, when I was seven, he was murdered by a burglar in his hotel room while attending a convention in Miami. And 20 years later, he was probably smiling down as I completed my medical degree in UP Manila. While training in PGH, I can remember feeling very frustrated by the sheer poverty that surrounded me. We would reuse uh, gloves. <laughs> we would reuse gloves, uh, needles, uh, syringes. Uh, and uh, I would use my lunch money to pay for medical tests because our patients could not produce 150 pesos to save their lives. I felt no matter how many people we helped, tomorrow would look like today, and we were just running in place. I feel, but the world was changing, groundbreaking technology was developing around us called the internet. I became enamored with the possibilities that the internet would unlock and one day catalyze development in the Philippines in a much broader way rather than helping one patient at a time. I saw an opportunity to impact Filipinos on a national scale. I went to, so I quit medicine and I went back to school. I went to business school in Silicon Valley and I worked for four years at Amazon because I wanted to learn about this thing called e-commerce and someday bring it back to the Philippines. I got that chance in 2012 when I got a call from a German firm called Rocket Internet to join their e-commerce startup in Southeast Asia called Lazada. At the time, Lazada was a startup in true sense of the word. During the early days, I remember answering phone customer inquiries by phone or email. And sometimes we had to go to the mall to buy an item so we could ship it. It was a far cry from Amazon, but I felt an immense optimism that we were building the future. Uh, during my time with Lazada, I learned two important lessons. The first lesson was the power of digital platforms to empower entrepreneurs to build a nationwide business that could compete on a level playing field with the biggest businesses in the Philippines. I realized that digital platforms enable Filipinos to self-determine and improve their station in life. Instead of giving them fish, we could empower them to catch fish. Allow me to share two stories of our entrepreneurs. The first one, increased their sales 2.3x since the pandemic. The second one, on board in 2018, increased their sales four times since February. The pandemic has shown us that Philippines is ready to embrace this new wave business. Since May, 700 sellers are going live on Lazada every day, three times higher than in February. Today, 100,000 sellers earn a living on Lazada every month, and 1,000 of them earn more than 1 million pesos a month. This translates to job creation among MSMEs and their staff, but also in ancillary sectors like BPO, logistics, digital marketing. Over the past eight years, Lazada has invested 25 billion pesos in the Philippine economy in the form of operating losses and capex while paying 400 million pesos in tax. To the question earlier, yes, Lazada is paying customs and tax in order to support the growth of MSMEs in the internet economy. Which is why we applaud the efforts of this bill which seeks to take Philippine legislation into this new economy. The second lesson I learned was that in, for, in order for consumers and sellers to try a new service and technology, we had to earn their trust. Trust continues to be the single most important driver of our business today. And we commend our legislators' desire to build the foundation of this new economy on the same principles we built our platform on. We have invested heavily in trust through the following means. Logistics and payment network that is safe and reliable. A help desk with self-service features. A policy framework that prioritizes and protects consumer rights. Today, if you buy, if you have a problem with your item in Lazada, we will return your money. Intellectual property protection portal where a brand owner can register and request to take down products. I think that is the response for all the Microsoft and Adobe products. 
of course, as we build a better mouse trap, someone is building a better mouse, and we're always trying to chase them. Robust artificial intelligence to detect, penalize, and blacklist fraudulent sellers and buyers. We still have a lot of work to do, but we feel that the results testify to our efforts. Today, we have 90% satisfaction rating when customers talk to Lazada. 0.41% of our orders become customer contacts, only 0.41. And only 0.001% of our orders ever become a DTI escalation, none of which has remained unresolved. My dear senators and friends, we believe we stand at the precipice of a new Philippine economy. Today, e-commerce is 4% of retail, but growing 32% annually. We believe that now is the time to open the floodgates of e-commerce to help MSMEs do business online at a time when many Filipinos have lost their jobs and are confined to their homes. We believe that this Internet Transactions Act can be landmark legislation for e-commerce by ramping up MSMEs online through easy onboarding and low operating costs, building consumer trust through reasonable and practical safeguards, and enabling platforms commercial viability because we provide MSMEs resources and opportunities previously accessible only to big businesses. Your honors, may we appeal that the Joint Committee seriously reconsider the notion of solidary liability on platforms on two grounds. Number one, it will potentially result in lessening customer trust because violators will hide behind platforms because it is easier for a regulator or enforcer to go after only the platform. And the second reason, it will severely risk platforms' commercial viability to the detriment of SMEs. Everyone will be impacted for the few bad apples. As we believe that platforms should be liable for responsibilities, such as I mentioned above, as well as notice and takedown and cooperation with authorities to pursue the real violators as Chairman Pimentel mentioned earlier, we will solve the dilemma in due time. But we strongly feel that solidary liability is not the answer. Let me close by saying at Lazada, we feel privileged to be part of these proceedings and the journey towards this Philippine internet economy. We hope we can work with you together to craft a bill where all stakeholders equitably. We remain highly optimistic in rebuilding our economy, even in the face of today's immense overwhelming challenges Thank you for this opportunity. My team and I will be happy to answer questions. Thank you, Mr. Ali Morong. Uh, Siguro, uh, we will uh, dispense with questioning at this time. So and let's listen to Shapi. Shapi, as Tet Shin Chong, who is present. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair. Uh, I am Jem Han Segovia from Shopee. Espanera, go ahead. Yes, uh, good afternoon, Mr. Chair, uh, Senator Skayatano, Senator Gachalian, Senator Marcos, Senator Go, and honorable members of the government agencies. Um, we are conscious of the time constraints, so we will just uh, identify our more detailed comments in our position paper, but we, would, we are very grateful to have been consulted in this process, and we are committed to work together to address the concerns identified, and we are heartened that the committee recognizes the importance of the growth of the economy. So even the, the presentation of the OMB will also address it in our position paper, which we will submit to the committee secretary. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay, but this will not be our one and only hearing. We'll have another hearing, and uh, all those invited uh, today are also invited to attend the, the next and the following hearings. And maybe you have forgotten some stakeholders. We will also invite them. So, do we still have our UP uh, lawyers present? The UP law Yes, sir. Attorney Reyes. Attorney Reyes, ba? Well, yes. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Chair. Uh, I'm Attorney Oliver Reyes of the Technology Law and Policy Program uh, of the UP Law Center. Uh, Attorney Decini had to unfortunately leave, but I'm prepared with the statement of the UP Law Center. Oh, 
So for us, for uh, that would be a, I think a fitting and nice uh, ending to this uh, session. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, so we would like, like to thank the committee for the invitation to appear at this hearing today. The UP Law Center has extended assistance to the House Committee on Trade, chaired by Representative Wes Cachalian, with respect to the counterpart House Bill. We are prepared to extend assistance as well to the Senate Committee with respect to this bill. We do agree that the time has come for defining a clear regulatory plat uh, framework governing internet transactions. There are several existing regulatory gaps that have resulted in uncertainty among internet commerce providers, as well as for government regulators. The establishment of the e-commerce bureau under the DTI will be a crucial development as it institutionalizes the e-commerce policy arm of the DTI, allowing the bureau to step in should there be regulatory gaps that need to be addressed. As we have advised the House Committee, there is no need for diminution or amendment of the respective jurisdictions of other regulatory agencies for the e-commerce bureau and the DTI to step in. And also, as we have advised the House Committee, uh, this bill, and as mentioned by Senator Gachalian, uh, this bill does pertain to a regulation of the buying and selling of, uh, in, of products online rather than content regulation. We are also keen that the regulatory framework would be able to provide, or it would be able in particular to promote and support Filipino platforms and businesses. We have advised the House Committee that domestic platforms should be treated equally as non-resident platforms, as equal treatment would give further assurance that Filipino businesses would be competitive and able to grow. Non-resident platforms or internet service providers that, uh, or service providers that nonetheless purposely avail of the Philippine market for their profit should not be allowed to evade the regulatory jurisdiction of the Philippines, considering that domestic businesses are already subject to such regulation. We are also pleased that the bill allows for effective remedies for Filipino consumers who are injured, even if sellers are located abroad. With such effective remedies, we would be promoting a trustworthy market which Filipino consumers will not hesitate to participate in. We applaud Senators Gachalian and Binay for authoring this bill, demonstrating a proactive approach of the Philippine government. The regulatory framework that would be established could very well serve as a model for other countries also struggling on how to properly balance the interests of entrepreneurs, consumers, and governments as the key stakeholders in e-commerce. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Pena. Attorney Oliver Reyes. So, uh, since we have already... Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, yes. can I, uh, I... I know that we have passed the 3 o'clock uh, mark, uh, Chairman. But is it still possible to... Uh, to ask some questions to um, Shapi and to Lazada. Oh, sige. Uh, are they still present? Lazada, Shapi, please listen to the questions of uh, Senator Gachalian. Go ahead, sir. Uh, uh, well, for the record, Mr. Chair, I'm a uh, loyal customer of both Shapi and Lazada, especially if, uh, especially during this pandemic. If you can check my records, and I'm ko pong pinabibili ho doon. Um, that's why. Uh, I, and I really acknowledge the uh, the platform has created a lot of entrepreneurs because I also buy from the marketplace. Uh, but Mr. Chair, I also noticed some uh, um, some uh, adverse effects, and that was pointed out earlier by OMB. You know, the, uh, Attorney Adriano presented uh, uh, slides of uh, pirated uh, movies, uh, pirated uh, software being sold. Uh, over the two websites, Shopee and Lazada. I'd like to ask um, uh, Dr. Alimuro, uh, how do you, I, I heard earlier that they, they're doing something about this, but I want to ask him, how come there's still cases like this? Um, again, you know, we want to promote honest, hardworking entrepreneurs. Uh, we want to promote entrepreneurs that are very sincere in uplifting their lives and use their platform to, do, to, do, to achieve that. But we're also seeing entrepreneurs, or not entrepreneurs, but in, in unscrupulous individuals selling uh, pirated uh, software. And uh, Mr. Chair, here in the Senate, we buy our original software from 
uh, regional distributors, and it creates an unlevel playing field for those regional uh, for those distributors who are selling original software. So, bakit pa may ganito, Mr. Ali, Dr. Ali Muno? Uh, yes, uh, Senator uh, Gachayan, uh, if I may, thank you for the question. Huh? Um, I think uh, the question is very valid. Uh, and I first want to say that Lazada is very serious about intellectual property. Uh, and uh, this, well, this was very important for our parent company, Alibaba, when they listed actually in the U.S. Uh, but I want to preface what I'm going to say by first making a blanket statement, which is when we look at any time there is a violation, like, for example, if there are burglars in society, I don't think it necessarily means na wala tayong police, right? So I, there are multiple ways by which we are addressing it. Number one, we have an intellectual property portal. Actually, the brand owners are enrolled in this portal and they can note, give us notice and we will react very quickly. Now, it is possible, of course, that they are not doing it or they are not doing it fast enough. Number two, we work very closely with regulators. We have worked with OMB actually before as well as NTC, PIDEA and every other agency where when we receive a notice and take down, we act very quickly. Uh, we also have uh, AI to check if a seller who has been blacklisted is trying to list himself again. Uh, furthermore, we also respond to customer complaints. So I think uh, it's uh, important to note now that it's not for lack of doing a lot of things that those are there. It's just that uh, we just have to continue to develop a, a better mousetrap as these guys try to develop better mice. Uh, we also have a section of our app called Blas Mall, where we blatantly, explicitly tell customers, if you would like to buy from a certified authorized distributor, please buy on Blas Mall. In fact, we have a legit Blas Mall campaign running right now. So we feel that there is a, a dilemma, a balance we need to play. Uh, we feel that the alternative would be to potentially just turn down, close down everybody. But uh, we feel that there will be more harm than good done by doing that. Uh, that's kind of where we, our position is right now, uh, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. But with your permission, Mr. Chair, I'd like to share something now on the screen. Is that okay, Mr. Chair? Uh, Senator Gatchel, let us uh, allow Shapi to react. Oh, yes. Okay, sir. Yeah, if, if uh, it wants to. Good afternoon, Mr. Mr. Chair. Uh, similar to Lazada, we also have a procedure for uh, taking down these um, counterfeit items whereby legitimate intellectual property rights owners can notify Shopee and request that uh, listings of what they believe to be counterfeit products be taken down. And we act on this surface as well. Mr. Chair, if you're with your permission, I'd like to share quickly just a few slides now. Go Chair. ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. How do you? Uh, yeah. It's, uh, uh, so, Mr. Chair, this is a uh, product being. Sorry, uh, um, can you see this, Mr. Chair? Yes, yeah, I, I can. Okay. Yes, this is a product being sold in Canada, uh, Mr. Chair. And we just uh, pulled it up just now, you no, know, because uh, uh, we followed the chain of thought of Attorney Adriano earlier. And uh, when we search in the internet. Oh. Uh, we also saw that FDA has a public health warning on this. So, okay lang, siguro we can forgive you mga pirated software, pirated uh, movies and TV uh, videos. But something that we consume is very dangerous. And this is being sold in online platforms. Uh, the same thing that we saw also in Shopee. Um, this is a uh, supplement that is being sold there. Uh, for Quito, dun po dun sa mga nagpapasexy. Pero at the same time, oh, FDA also uh, issued a uh, uh, public health warning against this product. And this is just, we just searched this uh, just now, uh, Mr. Chair. No? So, um, uh, and this is something that public the public consumes. Not everyone also goes to the FDA and search their website. 
um, if, if these products are being sold in these platforms, um, there's a big chance that we might be fooled and consumers will buy and take all of these things uh, to the detriment of their health. So again, Mr. Chair, I, I just want to ask um, uh, the two platforms, what are they doing to stop this? Obviously, the answer is they're doing something, but as we speak right now, no, and these are things that we just researched just right now, no, a few minutes ago. It's still happening, Mr. Chair. And the scary part is our 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 kababayans are consuming all of this. No, and uh, that's why uh, obviously the platforms are not doing enough to stop this type of uh, unscrupulous activities in their own platform, Mr. Chair. So I just want to ask them again: What are we doing to stop all of these things from happening? Uh, yes, uh, you're on break, if I may. Go ahead, Mr. Ali Marong. Go ahead. Yes, so again, on the part of Lazada, I, first of all, I, I would like to reiterate that the presence of violation uh, will not necessarily correlate to us not doing enough or not doing our responsibility. However, we do recognize that that is occurring. For pharmaceuticals, supplements, we actually use AI. We have uploaded hundreds and thousands of products via picture, name, uh, on formularies in the Philippines, other countries, so that they are not listed at all. And only whitelisted sellers, meaning sellers we have approved, can list. However, like I mentioned, there is still a chance that some of these are going to get through. And what we do, we respond to complaints and notices by regulators and add it to what we are doing. Uh, I go back earlier to what I was saying about building reasonable and practical safeguards to build consumer trust. Um, I, I think what I want to point out is that what you have demonstrated is occurring, but the creation of solidary liability to the platform does not prevent it from being created because the, of the practical difficulty in dealing with 50 million products of which we need to scour images and product names. So in order for a platform to protect itself against solidarity liability against such a violation, it will probably need to go to a direction where no small seller can list on our platform or, no, or, or the entire pharma and food category will be deactivated. I guess the point I'm trying to make is I understand the concern. We take it seriously and we're doing a lot, but we would like to brainstorm with your body uh, and the authors of the bill, uh, yourself and Senator Binay, on how we would do it, uh, because there is a practicality aspect that I think we need, to, uh, we need to jointly figure out. Again, we are very, very willing to cooperate, but we, are, we don't feel that solidary liability necessarily solves the challenge. Mr. Chair, may I comment? Senator Pia, yes, go ahead. Yeah, I'd like to weigh in on this, no? Um, I definitely share Senator Win Gachalian's concern. Um, I, uh, I, I chaired the Committee on Health for almost 10 years, and I've joined um, various campaigns, uh, Laban sa Peking Gamot. So I'm very concerned on more um, opportunities for for unscrupulous groups to sell their product, whether it's online or not online, it's irrelevant to me. But if there are opportunities for them to sell fake products that are harmful to human beings, whether it's food or pharmaceutical or supplements, that's a concern of ours. But that's exactly the point I want to make. Um, when I was a younger lawyer practicing with the law office, um, one of my practice was intellectual property law, and I had my first opportunity to join a raid. And this was the raid uh, by the client Lacoste uh, in, a, in known malls, in, in known malls where fake Lacoste products, among other clients of ours uh, that we represented, but in my mind, it's Lacoste that I recall. And this happens in malls. No? So, so it happens in brick and mortar, and it will happen online. Hindi tayo mamamatay kung may lakos na mabentang fake. I don't think ma you'll get a skin disease if you wear a fake, fake shirt. But when it comes to food or pharmaceuticals or supplements, there could really be health concerns. But again, this happens in brick and mortar stores, especially supplements. Um, it happens in uh, stands, in stalls. 
um, spread out across the malls that are selling various kind of supplements. I am very, very familiar with these products because I'm a health buff and uh, I'm always looking at what's the best protein uh, supplement. Um, I'm, all, I'm also I also look into keto products and so on and so forth. They happen online and offline. So it's a very valid concern and we need to find solutions. But I don't think I think we will go in the wrong direction if we're simply saying that, you know, uh, we, sh we, we should um, immediately close our, our doors to online platforms because it's available there. Well, it's available on the streets, online, in mail order. It's available everywhere. So let's address the problem holistically. That's what I want to say, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh... Si Attorney Adriano sa may ideas, but sa next hearing na lang, uh, Ansel. So, we have reached the designated time for our uh, suspension. So, and my screen so, uh, frozen, uh, frozen up. So, I do not see you anymore. I do not see anybody anymore. So, uh, we are here. Uh, I'd like <laughs> all of you, but siguro, give, let's continue as a by Limorong. Let's continue our official brainstorming by having a hearing on this subject matter uh, one or two weeks time because next hearing at the bill of Senator Bongo yung he mentioned uh, on e-governance and then the bill of Senator Angara mentioned by Senator Marcos as well as the bill to be filed by Senator Marcos. So let's let's we will have a more a more comprehensive uh uh view of the situation if we consider all of these uh bills so the committee will call for another hearing in at the latest in two weeks time uh, so in the meantime computer screen so i would like to thank everybody my fellow senators who are present uh, all our uh, resource persons, and I'm sorry to those who were not given the chance to share their thoughts now, but definitely, sir or ma'am, next hearing, kayo na po unahin natin, like si Attorney Santos of the Philippine Retailers Association, the other mm -hmm. online platforms, the Laura Carousel, and the lawyers, the UP Law Center, uh, let's try to solve the all of the uh, dilemma the legal dilemma pointed out uh, during this hearing. So, uh, no, in the meantime, if there is no my fellow senators, we... we Mr. Just... Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair, um, request lang, may we request all the resource persons to all to keep attending the hearings, even if they've already uh, made their statements or provided their positions, because uh, these are all interconnected and we'd like to them to be able to respond if there are questions later. So may we request uh, Secretary to do that, Mr. Chair. Everyone is invited to attend the next hearing. So pati, pati DOJ Siguro, uh, which had a bad connection, can now present their position in the next hearing. And uh, there's a suggestion, Facebook. We invited Facebook, no, Jingle? We, yes. Yes, sir. Let's invite Philippines and them. Mr. Chair, may presence din ba dito ang Viber? Kasi marami ring selling online sa Viber. Pwede ba Viber? Meron ba? Gamit na rin Viber. Sige, lahat na. Kasi nga, sabi ko kanina, uh, we have to solve all of these uh, problems in due time by consulting those involved uh, in real life, real life, uh, uh, real life situations, real life applications ng ating pag-aralan. Okay, so... Uh, Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Please invite all, all that we can uh, invite Okay, everyone, our next one or two. Let me. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Maraming salamat sa lahat. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Nag-peace na yung.